Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Retro Rackin' Tour Live. Hopefully my mic is on. It's been a while since I've done this. It's been just a little bit, guys. It's been just a little bit. So seeing that, uh, <laughs> seeing some of those clips there uh, was kind of a, a fun trip down memory lane. So as long as you guys can hear me, give me a thumbs up, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Okay, we're getting lots of highs in the chat. I'm serious, man. I streamed I streamed for a really long time, but you know, every now and then the streamer still they forget to hit that uh unmute the mic button, you know? Sometimes you just forget to hit it. But tonight, I think I hit it. It looks like everything's coming in clear. Don't want to don't want to spike the mic though too much. Actually, uh let me check one thing here on the filter of the mic. Okay, good. Yeah. Just making sure we got the limiter on there cuz we don't want it to get too, too loud. Oh, man. Look at this. We are... All right. So, let's see. We got Gretchen in the chat. Mark. Joel. Josh. Dylan. What's up, Dylan? Dylan was actually the very first person ever to join the YouTube channel as a YouTube member. It's it's so weird getting used to that different terminology on Twitch. It's like subscribe. But on YouTube, sub subscriptions are free. On Twitch, it's the subscriptions you pay for. So Dylan was the first ever member. Uh, so Dylan has access to those brand new Gryffindor Ravenclaw. Oh wait, I mean, uh, I mean our um, our lion emote, our snake emote, badger and eagle emote. So let's see who else we got in the chat. We've got. Um, Let's see, I said Mark already. Play JD is here. Blake Shear. Lots of names I'm recognizing from the YouTube comments, guys. So thank you all so much. Uh, Fernandez. I never know how to pronounce your first name. D U A R T E. Duarte? Probably terribly, terribly mispronounced it there. My apologies. Too bad I'm from Europe. It's my bedtime. I'll watch tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We got Archie Maker in the chat as well. Nightly Nerd. Nightly Nerd, what is up? Welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. Cynix, another name that I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly. In, in my head, whenever I see you, Cynix, and this is C-I-N-I-Q-S. I may have even asked you before how exactly do you pronounce it. <laughs> so if I didn't, I forgot. My apologies. We got Wild Panda Girl here. We got Mary here. We got Nathan here. Ultra Blue J Jr. Is it Ultra Blue JR or Ultra Blue Jr.? One of the two. I'm not sure. Bright Eyes, welcome. Lived. Oh, wait, hold on. This is, <laughs> this is a long one right here. Lived or no, li I bet it's Live, Dance, Laugh, Music, Love. Hey, that's that's kind of cool. I like that. Number one proprietor of Hogwarts Legacy News. I appreciate that. There's a, there's a lot of good Hogwarts Legacy content creators out there. And it seems like we're growing by the day, which is good to see. Seems like uh, every day I hop on YouTube, there's a, a fresh new face that pops in as somebody who is um, making Hogwarts Legacy content, which is awesome. We got John, we got Wubby, we got Ellie here in the chat. Demonic One. Let's see, I think we already said hi to Archie, Laser, Laser Rio, maybe? B Freshness, Scotty Boy, Jason Ingram. John again, the White Wolf, Fred. We got George, we got Trin. Let's see. And we got Dev. Hey, are you? Uh, do you happen to be a Hogwarts Legacy dev by any chance? 10 a.m. for you, Mark. Oh, nice. Where are you coming to? Uh, coming from, I should say, Mark. Yeah, every that's the thing. Anytime I comment about, hey, where I'm thinking about bringing back live streams or I want to do live streams again, one of the first things people always say is they're like, oh, that's too late for me. All my UK friends, they're like, it's it's too late. And I'm like, trust me, I wish I could do it earlier. I really do. But like 8 p.m. Eastern for me is kind of the earliest I could hop on for a live stream. So it's because I usually I'm at work until about 536 every day, every weekday. Um, and so then I get home, it's dinner, it's play with the kids for a little bit, help get the kids in bed, you know, take a walk or something. So there's there's not a lot of time. But who knows, maybe one day, one day. Red Exorcist, if it isn't just a dad who likes games and the stories they tell. Very close, Red Exorcist. It's just a dad who loves games and the stories they tell. But you almost had it. You almost had it. <laughs> Thank you for saying, oh, yeah, no problem. 
Brisbane, Australia. Nice. So it's 10 a.m. there. Awesome. We got TM03 watching from Spain. Believe we take release date in Gamescom. Oh, man. And that one, my apologies. That is characters I do not recognize. The only one I recognize is the one at the front there, B. So my apologies. But B there, I believe we get a release date in Gamescom. It's possible. It's possible. I'll tell you what. I don't think so because... It seems like Sony has this lockdown in terms of the marketing exclusivity. Every time we get major news, there's like a Sony component, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a state of play, they, they always have a big, big role in it. Hi, IQ Warrior. What is up, dude? Welcome. Good to see you here. Man, it's so awesome. Like I said on Twitter and I think I posted, uh, yeah, I posted this on the YouTube community as well. I have missed doing live streams. And for those of you who follow me for a while, you probably know the story of why I haven't been doing them. Um, but for the for the new ones here, just to sum it up really quick. So I used to stream on Twitch about three nights a week. This was like pre-pandemic, so pre-2020. Did this for many years. And just, it was something I did after work just for fun. Um, and then 2020 happened and I had a lot of time off work. And so I said, you know what? Let's start a YouTube channel. Let's let's really commit to this. Let's really learn it. Let's really do this. And YouTube, as you guys have seen, by the way, not to sidetrack us too much, but we just hit 25,000 subscribers, which is incredible. So thank you guys so much for that. That is that is absolutely incredible. I saw that we were kind of getting close throughout the day. I thought, dude, that'd be so awesome if we hit that before I go live tonight. So I checked right before I hopped on, and we did indeed. We we made it, guys. 25,000 subscribers. Incredible. So um, I know I said long story short, so let me try and shorten it here. But yeah, the YouTube channel took off. Well, then I went back to work. So I work for a library and we were closed for a while. Well, then we reopened. And so then I had to go back to work. And so all of a sudden, all that extra time I had, it kind of became a choice of YouTube or Twitch. I had to decide. And I clearly chose YouTube. And it's been a couple of years. I mean, really, since 2020 that... I've committed and I said I want to commit to bringing back live streams because it's just a totally different feel getting to interact with you guys in real time and answer questions in real time, seeing all of you in the chat, some of the names that I see every day in the comments. Uh, it's awesome. So thank you all so much for being here. All right, so let's get caught up here now. Little lady, hope the game comes out this holiday. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I mean, that's still the official word, right? Official word is still... Holiday 2020. 1 a.m. for William. Oh, yeah, and I saw some people commenting about the shirt. Somebody said they love the shirt, and then somebody said, uh, let me see here. Hold on, let me scroll back up. Somebody said, a lightsaber, <laughs> a lightsaber behind me. No, like, when I was setting this up, I really hoped you guys would be able to see the full light. But the camera angle here, actually, I can do this for right now. I mean, now you can see what it is, right? It's like the it's like the R, you know, and it's in my my logo colors. But it just didn't quite work out because my head is way down here. But hey, I mean, lightsaber, that's that's pretty slick, too. If you think about it as a lightsaber and then we got link. Oh, wait, this way we got link right down here oh and then you can see my dog right there a small piece of my dog anyway her name's luna by the way I'll, I'll let you guys guess where that came from you know just just take a wild guess wild guess but yeah somebody was asking about the shirt so this shirt was from the in the lead up to book seven i listened to two podcasts very frequently um potter cast and muggle cast so MuggleCast is the podcast that MuggleNet put out, and PotterCast was the p official podcast of The Leaky Cauldron. And they did a what they called a Summer of Seven tour to where they went around to all these different, I think it was a Borders bookseller, which is kind of sad because I don't think Borders are around anymore. Um, I, think that, I think they were at Borders. And I went to a live show, and they had merch there. So this was the, I, as soon as I saw the shirt, I was like, I got to have that. It's an awesome shirt. And it's like, it's unique, you know? You don't see a lot of people. It's not like something you can go and buy at Universal. So it's it's a fun one. It's a fun one for sure. 
We got somebody 1 a.m. in England. Watching from Spain. That is awesome. Dirk says here, love your Hogwarts Legacy content. Hey, appreciate that. Oh, and it was it was Tom who asked the question about the uh about the shirt. So there you go, Tom. Such a great dad if you walk with Oh yeah, we we love to take walks. My kids today, they're like, ah, I don't feel like walking. So we we got the wagon out. Just carried them around. <laughs> I'll I'll pull them around in the wagon for a bit. Doncic MVP. Watching from France. Nice. Russia. When is Gamescom? That's a good question. I just like I haven't even put a lot of um I just haven't even really put it on my radar because I just really don't think we'll get much there. I mean, I I'd love to be wrong. I really would. Um from August first. Let's see. No, it's definitely not August 1st. Why is this not like the first thing that pops up when you Google Gamescom 2022? Uh, August 24th through 28th. There you go. Fred says, only YouTuber actually watch when it comes to content for Hogwarts Legacy. Hey, I appreciate your support. Uh, honestly, though, like, I mean, there are a lot of good creators out there. So it, it and I, th I feel like we all bring kind of something unique to the table. I watch a lot of them, but then at the same time, I try not to watch too much because it's this really weird thing when you're trying to come up with original ideas because you don't want to just basically make another video that somebody else has already made, even though we're covering a lot of the exact same things. So, but yeah, there are a lot of good ones out there, um, for sure. So I definitely encourage you guys to check them all out. Nightwing, they're playing it close to the chest, smart. I mean, they're, they're definitely playing it close to the chest. But we're gonna talk a little bit. Actually, let's, let me go ahead and switch scenes here. You're a wizard, Harry. Yo, I forgot. I I forgot to set up the alerts. Oh man, I didn't set up the alerts on the oh, other sir. page. Anytime, anytime you see you're a wizard, Harry, that is, uh, that is someone who is subscribed to the channel, but I don't know why your names aren't popping up. Why are the names not popping up? Let me see if I can, uh, get the names to pop up there. Uh, let's see. Let's take that down for a second. Think Sony will say release date December 13th? Uh, it, it's possible. I feel like December 13th would be the last day if they're going to release in this year. Because, let me pull up a calendar here real quick to make sure I'm not. December 13th, that is... So it's not the Tuesday before Christmas because the following Tuesday would be December 20th. I mean, is that like too close to the holidays? You want to give people plenty of time to be able to buy the game before the holidays. I'm trying to remember, I feel like Smash Brothers Melee on the GameCube was a December release that might have, it might have been right around December 20th. It's been a long time though. It's been a long time. So yeah, maybe they could get by with December 20th. I'm, I'm still, I'm still sticking to December 6th. We've seen that come up a lot more lately, but I did say in the video that I released today that I, I do think there's still a chance it gets delayed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I really am. I really am sorry. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'll, I'll explain the delay in a second. I'll explain the delay in a second. Let me try to fix the you're a wizard Harry first here. Because <laughs> I want you guys to see your names when you subscribe to the channel. I want you to see them popping up at the top there. So yeah, I, I streamed on Twitch for a while. I saw somebody ask if I'll ever stream on Twitch again. I think so. I, I do. I want to add... I don't want to bite off more than I can chew, which is what happened last time to where I, I was doing like three nights of streaming, trying to do two YouTube videos a week, and it was just way too much. So we're still doing the two YouTube videos. And now I'm going to slow, I'm going to try to add this style of show right here, like this talk show. Like we're still kind of here at the beginning. We're just chatting. Then we're going to get into more of a, of a discussion. We're going, going to go through all the latest news. We're going to go through some theories and then we'll answer questions throughout. So this is going to be more like a laid back talk show. Um, honestly, inspired by, I've been watching a, Expecto Go's live streams. If you guys, if you love Hogwarts Legacy and you're not following Expecto Go, 
definitely check out Expecto Go. Expecto Go is the man when it comes to theories on this game. I'm telling you, he is constantly coming up with unique theory and lore ideas, but I love his live streams. I love his live streams. I love the vibe that he has with his chat. And I was like, man, building something like that, I, I really feel like the live streams are such a key component. So shout out to Expecto Go and somebody else just <laughs> subscribed, but we can't see your names. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go into my streaming tools here because I, I revamped, even though I, ha I hadn't streamed in a while, but I kind of revamped a lot of my, like all these overlays I've had for a while, but the alerts and everything I changed. I, I wanted them to work with the Harry Potter theme, the Hogwarts legacy theme instead. All right, let's go into alerts here. And let's go into settings and let's go to subscriber alert. All right, let's try it in this style. And we'll save that and we'll see how that looks when it comes back in. And then we can bring back the PC screen there. All right. <clears throat> Seth Green subscribe. Oh, I see it in the chat there. Nice. Thank you, Seth, for the subscription here. All right, let's try and catch up on some of the comments here. I'm going to pop my chat to this other side. Oh, this is perfect. There we go. Expecto Go is awesome, Andrew. I love me some Expecto Go. Jay Rossi! What is up, Jay Rossi? A long-time supporter. Jay Rossi is a name I have been seeing for a very long time in the comments. Thank you so much. Don't you dare say that, Dylan says. That's got to be about the release date. See, that comment was made a while ago, but I, I already know. <laughs> I already know what it was about. December 13th is birthday. December 14th, that's your birthday. Hey, lots of December uh, birthdays. Here's a question from the White Wolf. Do you think all the leak dates are changing their reveal plans at all? I don't think so. I don't think the, because I think all of this is just noise. I don't even know if it, like, like let's take for example, the art book thing. Cause that's, that's been a big one as of late, right? Because we saw the US Amazon listing of the official Harry Potter art book still says December 31st and has for a while now. But then we started noticing, I don't know, two weeks or so ago, a week and a half ago, I was on vacation, so I don't remember the exact time frame of it. But people started noticing that some of the other territories, the date was changing to December 6th. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people missed on this. I talked about this in my video today. So Rolling Library, that's a, an account on Twitter and a website. Rolling Library is initially the one who broke the story about this art book in general. And when they broke the story, the date was September. It was supposed to come out in September, actually September 6th. A wizard. There we go, now we can see it. Mew Store, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. All right, we got that fixed. Now I can see your names when we get the subscriptions coming through. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, so Rolling Library broke that story. Initially, the release date was September 6th. Then it eventually changed to December 31st, except for Amazon UK. The UK folks, you probably know this. The UK one has said December 6th for a while. And so I think a lot of people just, they saw maybe one had changed. And so then they started checking a bunch of other ones and seeing that, oh, they're all, they're all starting to say December 6th now. And there, there was somebody, uh, it might've been, I'm pretty sure it was Wife Once a Wizard, uh, another fellow Hogwarts Legacy YouTuber. I believe they were speculating that maybe it is third party Amazon sellers in other countries have potentially gotten something that leads them to think December 6th is the release date for the book, for the book. But that's not, that piece is not confirmed. And even if it was confirmed, that doesn't automatically mean that the art book is coming out that day. And as Rolling Library has maintained from the beginning, like until the publisher says this is when it's coming out, none of this is final. I mean, we saw it change from September to December like that. So all that stuff, is is it's just a lot of noise now the gamestop thing is pretty interesting the gamestop thing is pretty interesting because um if you all haven't followed that one that was kind of the main point of my video today uh people got this email i think yesterday and the day and, and maybe today as well from gamestop that's like something about xbox but then in the little preview so you know if you're like checking your email on your phone you're gonna see like a tiny little preview of the email well, the preview says something about pre-ordering the Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition. I'm like, wait, wait, what? 
Then you open the email and there's nothing at all about Hogwarts Legacy. So my speculation on that part is, well, clearly someone at GameStop is prepping. And Expecto Go, I'm pretty sure this was Expecto Go, um, who posted a uh, a screenshot of him in a GameStop where they have like a Hogwarts Legacy, not game box, like a really large picture of the game that says coming soon. So like somebody at GameStop has gotten, or maybe they're just kind of looking at their releases. I don't know. But my guess, and this was posted in a comment on that video today, someone was saying, hey, what if it was actually that was supposed to be for September 1st? What if that was supposed to be for exactly one month from today and they just like, they they copy pasted the wrong, um, the wrong little um, blurb, teaser, whatever you want to call it, preview of the email. Hello from Sweden. Hey, welcome. Jason says, wife wants a wizard. Pretty, pretty different for me. Yeah, I mean, we're all, we're all, uh, I, th I think we all have kind of an own, our own unique style, which, which is good. I think, I think that's, that's healthy for the community. But yeah, I, I definitely encourage you guys. This is one thing I learned early on in starting this YouTube journey. The, the thing about YouTube is like, if any one of us, so like, if me or Expecto Go or if, uh, Podcast Now, Benjamin Snow, if, if any of us have a video that takes off, it actually helps bring up everybody because what happens is that video starts reaching a lot more people and the way youtube works is like if you if you go on youtube right now and you, you start watching a video over on the right side probably this way for the camera yeah this way over on the right side of your screen you'll start to see all these little like suggestions and it's like oh some of these are from the same creator but then you like scroll down and then oh wait this is another one about hogwarts legacy and then that can also influence what you see on your home page so it really does help everybody. So don't don't feel like you just have to support one of us. Honestly, I mean, there is plenty of Hogwarts Legacy love to go around. CW Evans says, when do I think they'll drop the release date? <sighs> well, I've been wrong already on that one. So I, I thought it was going to be like right after the God of War announcement happened. I was like, okay, this is what people have been waiting for. And, and we kind of did like across the industry. We started to see announcements and other things sort of slot into place some completely move their games out of the area completely so i thought okay a couple weeks goes by then we're gonna get the date so i was i was thinking like mid-july maybe um so i i'm expecting it anytime from now until um like early mid-september hey steph with the super chat thanks for the content oh, steph thank you so much for the support Thank you very much. I, I, I'm telling you guys, it has been a blast covering this game. <laughs> it really has. And for those of you who follow the channel for a while, you you know kind of my history with, through my videos, you've probably heard me talk about my history of just loving this franchise. In fact, somebody, somebody was giving me a hard time in the comments today about, um, I posted a video just about uh, the thumbnail is after all this time. And it's, it's really about, those of us who have been Potter fans since the beginning, I'm talking before the movies were a thing. And if you're not, it's okay. You know, there, I know there's some younger ones out there. Y you may not even care about the movies or the books. You just think the game looks cool. That's totally fine too. But for the long time, Harry Potter fans, man, I mean, this is just like, it really is a special moment Re regardless. I mean, I hate to say regardless of how the game pans out, but it really is just a crazy ambitious solid green. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Welcome. Welcome. But yeah, I mean, it's um, William Bradseth. Thank you so much for the subscription as well. Oh, man, let's see. Chandler tweeted, nothing going to be shown at Gamescom. That's right. I do feel like I remember seeing that, Dylan. Which, by the way, this was going to be my top news item of discussion today. Have, have any of you tuned in? Let me actually pull this up here. Did any of you tune in to the... Let's see if they have anything on the subreddit. Today was the day of that developer. Oh, let me see. I've got it pulled up in another window here. The Autodesk session, I think is what it was called. So let's search Autodesk. This is another thing that Chandler tweeted about. 
So here, this was from Chandler. Um, I've seen some excitement around our session at the Autodesk Vision Series and want to set expectations. It's a developer-focused event with cool insights into our development process and animation pipeline, but don't expect a big new trailer or other information. So that is actually today. That was supposed to be taking place right before I hopped on for this live stream. And um, there was a post on Reddit. This was uh, about 18 days ago. Are you aware of this? So here's the event right here this autodesk vision series so i don't know i mean like chandler said there's not going to be any sort of a uh, major news breaking out of it but i thought there might be some cool little tidbits shared so if any of you in the chat have something on that let me know uh do you think the game will have a lot of bugs well that's absolutely what they're tackling right now for sure and we've seen that because they've shared it they, they've shared it on Twitter <laughs> in a comical way, which I, I applaud them for. Uh, and it's been, a, it's, been, it's been a little bit since they've shared something like that. Uh, but remember they had the one with the centaur just like flying through the area. And then they had, um, they had one with uh, Sebastian's mission, I think it was. Or was that the same thing? I think that was a separate one, right? But the main thing is that they're fixed before the game releases. So I don't think they're going to release if it's full of a lot of bugs. I hate to bring up <laughs> I don't even want to say the the name of the game. You guys already you guys already know just when we start talking about bugs, it's on the edge of everyone's lips. Everybody's just waiting to start talking about Cyberpunk. And I, I hate talking about cyberpunk because it's like, guys, yes, cyberpunk taught the industry a lot of things, but not every single thing relates back to cyberpunk, okay? Calm down. People didn't want their game to release full of bugs before cyberpunk. But but in reality, there have been lawsuits around that. So it is it is a big deal for the industry. So I will say, I really think that that incident is going to make everyone take an even greater focus on not releasing their games in a in a broken state. So I don't think it'll have a lot of bugs because I don't think they'll release it. Uh, I think they would delay it again, which, man, as someone who works in marketing myself, that one is tough because I feel like, I really feel like, guys, early December for Hogwarts Legacy will be such, that is such a good time frame, man. Right when people are finishing up God of War, there's not a lot of major releases that would be competing for it. I mean, it could really just, it's going to sell well regardless, I believe. But that early December release would absolutely crush. I mean, it would crush. Now, as we've seen, I mean, Elden Ring did fine releasing in what? February. Games release in January, February, March, and they do just fine. But, oh, man, that early December would be such a nice uh, nice range. All right, I got to get caught up with these comments here. Uh, let's see. What do you expect September 1st? Hi, Q, will they do something special? I think it's going to be mostly PlayStation. Um, but that, that could be, everybody talks about that cause it's back to Hogwarts day, the whole, like the whole wizarding world. So like, um, the official wizarding world website, they do a lot around that, that time. So people have thought maybe they're gonna, maybe they can loop it into that. It, it seems like PlayStation has the marketing exclusivity for Hogwarts legacy, because that's really the only place we've seen it other than like the official Twitter account and stuff. Um, and just to be clear, it is coming to other platforms. I still, I get that question all the time, which for people who haven't been following every single thing, I, I understand. Um, but to be 100% clear, guys, it is coming to pretty much every major console out there, even the Nintendo Switch, and it's also coming to PC. So when we talk about PlayStation exclusivity, we're talking about marketing exclusivity. Jenna thinks we'll get a, a Hogwarts Legacy release date in August or September. Yeah, I feel like that late August, early September is kind of like like early September. If they haven't said something by September 2nd, September 3rd, September 4th, I think that's when people are really going to start to get antsy and be like, okay, you got to give us something. Even, even if it's just, even if it's a delay, because you're looking at what, October, November, December. I mean, that's three months, three, four months right there. Oh man, you guys are, are you, dude, the questions, you guys are asking so many good questions and I'm way behind. So I'm going to, I apologize. I'm going to have to skip over some of these questions. I'm going to scroll and catch up with you here. You're a 
wizard, Harry. Sir Barrymore, thank you so much for the subscription there. <laughs> feathers. Oh, I scroll down and Feathers is the first comment that I see. Uh, Liam Nolan A, thank you so much for the sub as well. Do you do... I struggle with pronouncing this word. I listen to Expecto Go pronounce it all the time, and I never say it out loud because I don't think I can pronounce it. Pirettes? A, a pirette? He says it just so clearly and perfectly. I do not. I've never tried. I'm gonna have to get Expecto Go to teach me sometime. He's he's got the he's got the experience with ballet. So, wasn't there a rumor that the PlayStation Showcase is coming this month, August? Dylan, yes. That's a that's a new one actually. Just a couple days ago. Um, but then the the other part of that rumor was like, but it may get pushed back. <laughs> it's like okay, okay. Yo, Solid Green, thank you so much for the super chat. Let's see, did Solid Green have a question? I don't see a question from Solid Green. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. If you had a question, maybe just try to post it in the normal. Yeah, because for whatever reason, it didn't show me a question with it. I'll keep a lookout. But yeah, thank you so much for showing your support there. Uh, D Immortales. Oh, I love this question. I love this question. What do you think? I see you've been you've asked that question a couple times. What do you think the floating wand is in the pre-order bonus? I think that's a physical item. I think that is a physical item. Which let me see here. I'm gonna try and pull up. I have a bunch of uh Man, I was cracking up looking at <laughs> whenever Expecto Go does its live streams, I love when he's like on his computer going through his folders. And you just see like all the, <laughs> all these Hogwarts Legacy folders with all these different. And I'm like, oh man, I I feel you, James. I feel you, because I have the exact same setup on my computer. So I'm trying to find the picture that I have of the um, of the the collector's edition stuff. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is what that question is referring to here. So this is, if you're not sure, if you've been living under Hogwarts Legacy Rock and you haven't seen all this yet, basically some really eager fans were looking around through the code of HogwartsLegacy.com, the official Hogwarts Legacy website. And anybody can do this. I mean, it's something any of you can do. Like every every web page on the internet, you can go and like view the source HTML code. So that's this is a legit thing. And they found some text that spoke to multiple editions of the game. Collector's Edition, Deluxe Edition, and Standard Edition. Which, all of this was promptly removed, by the way. I think it took them, I think it was like less than 24 hours, it was all removed. But I, I tested it myself, I confirmed it, this was totally legit. So it was from the official website, but it wasn't... I guess technically it was public information, but it wasn't intentionally shared with the public. So we don't we don't know if this is for certain. Well, then a few days later, somebody was digging around even more and found some actual visuals for it. And that is what this right here that you see on screen is what they were able to find. So you see standard edition base game, deluxe edition base game, Thestral Mount, Dark Arts Cosmetic, Dark Arts Battle Arena, Dark Arts Garrison At, Digital Deluxe only on that one. 72 hours early access to the game, Digital Deluxe only. And then a Kelpie robe. So this, again, caution, none of this is final. None of this is confirmed. Even though it came from this source, this could have been put in there temporarily as placeholder, where they were still talking about it, discussing it. It may not have even been finalized. So the, we could get more than this. We could get less than this. We could get exactly this. Or we could get some of this and some new stuff that we haven't seen. And then the other one has pretty much all the same stuff, but also steel case and then floating ancient magic wand with book. I think that is definitely a physical item that if it's the only physical item, then, I mean, other than a steel book, which, I mean, steel books are cool. I'm kind of over them at this point. 
not to sidetrack too much, here's my issue with Steelbooks, guys, is that they never include the regular cover of the game, too, or the regular game box, which drives me crazy. As a collector, drives me crazy, because then when you display them on your shelf, you've got to, like, find a different place for the Steelbook one. Oh, it's a nightmare. In fact, the uh, the Metroid... Um, Wizard. You guys see, I got, I'm a big fan of Metroid. Got some Metroid stuff back there. Joel, thank you so much for subbing to the channel. Uh, but this here, uh, no, wait, that right there, you can't really make it out on the little camera there. But it's a, uh, it's a Metroid Dread Collector's Edition. Well, the one in the U.S. it only included the steel book box. The one in Europe included the steel case and the regular game box. I'm like, come on. Why does the U.S. not get the full one? Anyway, I digress. My point here is that it seems like in this collector's edition that they have here, the only physical items are the steel case and the floating ancient magic wand with book. So if those are the only two things, I mean, then this floating ancient magic wand with book better be a pretty incredible piece, right? Now, here's my question. Is the book the art book? Or is it like, like floating ancient magic wand with book? There's a lot of those things. Um, I don't know if I've seen it with a wand, but if you go around online and you search like floating light bulb, there people have these on the desk where it, it literally looks like it's floating in midair above this, above this little base. So I'm like, is that like, are they doing something crazy like that? Or is it just something that's kind of in like a case that you put on display? And then is the book like underneath the wand or is the book the art book? I, I would see the book being the art book, but then why wouldn't it be a separate entry, you know? Why wouldn't it be a separate entry? Yo, Mary is here as well. Mary Studios, welcome. That is another name I recognize from the comments. All right, let's get back to these questions here. Let's see. Search HTML code. Uh, Dylan, I absolutely think we will see a Chamber of Secrets Easter egg. I don't think we'll be able to go in it, but I think 100% they will have something hinting at the Chamber of Secrets. Probably in the, in the girls' bathroom. Razor thinks in about 14 to 15 days, PlayStation will announce the release date. Janessa says, listen, Retro, I need this game now, <laughs> right? Don't we all? DJ, do you think the game will do well on Nintendo Switch? I, I, That is a million dollar question. I would love to know. I would love to know how it's going to run on Switch. I made a video asking, is it going to be a cloud version? And people are like, no, there's a physical version. You can see it on Amazon. I'm like, well, that's not officially a physical version. All that is is like they're showing you a box with a switch on it. Maybe you're just going to get a code emailed to you or a code. You open up a box and there's a code there. Um, I, I can't imagine. I mean, clearly the Switch version is going to be inferior. If you're talking about how well it will sell, I think as long as it runs well, like if they can run a solid 30 frames per second on the Switch. What is a Switch? Like I think handheld is 720. Well, in handheld mode when you're just uh, not playing docked. I mean, so if they can get a solid 30 FPS, 720, I think that'll be, uh, I think that would be pretty good. Nerdy Giant, yo, thank you so much for the super chat. Let me scroll down and get your question there. Do you think the day and night cycle will be like Red Dead Redemption 2? How do you think the day and night cycle will work? Yo, back to back super chats. Expecto go here in the house. What is up, my friend? Smash the thumbs up. Hey, that's right, expect they'll go. They were, dude, they were asking me about purettes earlier, which I'm, I, I struggle even pronouncing that word. So trying to do one, I'm gonna need you to teach me sometime. Whenever we have like a, we need a big Hogwarts Legacy meetup. And I, I, I saw expect to go. He tried to get Alex from Podcast Now to do this as well. Alex wouldn't bite. So we're gonna have to have like a session where expect to go is gonna teach us all a, a purette. <laughs> Oh man. Hey, thank you guys for so much for showing that uh monetary support there with the super chat. So Expecto Go says, uh visited three game subs. Okay, so that was your picture. I saw somebody post on Reddit. Which say a December 9th, 16th Friday release. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have breaking news here with Expecto Go, our correspondent live on the ground. <laughs> Early access December 6th or December 13th. Dude. Dude. That is some good information. Man, it seems like the more December 6th like keeps coming up. Keeps coming up. And I saw that Podcast Now put out a video recently like saying, hold on. Have all of us forgotten something here with this whole 72 hours thing? Because if, if the game releases early, 72 hours early, then... So, like, which one would be the Tuesday release? Because WB typically releases their game on Tuesday. So if what Expecto Go is saying here, the early access would be, like, the 72-hour release date. 72-hour early access on December 6th. Oh, man. Three game stops today, which say a December 9th. December 16th, Friday release with Tuesday early access. Dude, that, that date keeps popping up. The December 6th keeps popping up. We had the stuff with the art book recently. Clearly retail, something is happening. I think that's, what, what did I title today's video? Because I was just like, something is going on with Hogwarts Legacy. It is, man. Something behind the scenes. Pieces are moving. They're getting things lined up. They're getting things in place. It's, it's about to drop soon, man. I really, I, I, I've been saying soon for a while, but these next couple weeks, I, I feel like it's it's time, man. It's time. Let's see if, uh, make sure Expecto Go didn't make any other comments here. That's super interesting, though. All right, so we got Nerdy Giant, um, the day and night cycles. That is one that I really, really want to know. I really want to know how it works. Gretchen, hey, Gretchen with the super chat as well. How many spells do you think are in? Will there be fun miscellaneous spells? The pimple jinx or agua minty to prank NPCs? How about Imperial Crucio? Oh yeah, we gotta get to that one too. But the day-night cycle, see this is what's fascinating about the day-night cycle stuff. Let me go ahead and change this since we kind of uh, finished talking about that for now. Actually, you know what? Let's see if we can get the uh, I'd love to get that shot up. I'm pretty sure it's in one of the Hogwarts Legacy blogs where they have. There it is, right there. All right, so let's get that into HD. Oh man, we can't watch that too much. <laughs> or hold on, let's put it in. Uh... Can I not drop the speed in this player? I guess not. I'll just pause it right here. Or no, I don't like that shot. Right. Right there. Because really with the day-night cycles, the, the piece that I can't figure out, Nerdy Giant, is it has to work well with classes. It has to work well with classes. And pretty much all, I feel like I saw Expecto Go talking about this. Alex has talked about it. Benjamin Snow has talked about it. Uh, I think Wife Wants a Wizard. I think all of us have talked about this at some point. It's like the how they handle the classes, I think, will shape how the day-night cycles work. Because while I would love to say that I think it's going to be like completely kind of open, like... um what'd you say red dead i think this is how red dead 2 handles it and like how zelda handles it where you just have this running like where the game has its own internal clock that's just running and you can see the clouds moving you can see everything changing i would love for it to be like that but if that's how they do it then i can't figure out how they will make classes work because once it gets night then you can't be going to classes and as Expecto Ghost's significant other Sue has so eloquently pointed out if you if you do that then people are going to feel this like sense of urgency to like oh man I, I have this allotted amount of time I've got to get to this this and this class and I don't know that they would want to put that pressure on on players now some people have said they would like they want that like they want to be like oh man I've got to decide how am I going to spend my time today? This is sort of like Persona Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5. They kind of sort of do it like that where, I mean, you have to choose like which which um, friend are you going to spend time with today? So they, they do force you to make some choices like that. I think they're going to have to have a system 
this is a very long answer. You asked me for what my thought, like what my guess would be. I still feel like they're going to have to have a system to where you will see it advance to a point. So maybe there's like a morning and an evening. And then it won't it won't progress until you say like I'm done I'm done with uh, I'm going to end the day, which is how the old Harry Potter games did it, right? You would end the day and then you would have a night section. So then you can go and it, it, you explore the castle at night and get into all sorts of things like that. So I know that's not a good answer, but I just like if it wasn't for classes, like if this was like you're out of Hogwarts, you're in Auror and you're just going around and um Oh, Jason with a super chat as well. Maybe the key date. Uh, hold on. Maybe they key the day night thing to classes or tie. Maybe you meant to say tie. Yeah, I think that I think that's definitely how those two connect. That's that will that will give us the answer as to how the day night cycles work, I think. All right, now to Gretchen's question, how many spells do you think are in? Somebody was just asking me this on Twitter as well. They were saying, um, did I think 70 spells would be too much? I do think 70 would be too many, too many to expect. Um, so far, we have seen, uh, I, I want to say we've seen like a dozen or so, maybe even more than that. Hold on, where'd my Hogwarts Legacy page go? There we go. See if they have anything. I don't think there's anything in the FAQ. Oh, there is. There is a bit about spells. So my guess to that person who asked asked me on Twitter is I said probably around twenty to twenty five. I feel like. Um, I love your idea of having some other, like minor spells that are sort of like just for fun, that aren't necessarily for. You're not going to use this to solve a a, a puzzle. And you're not going to use this in battle, but it's something like uh, the Pimple Jinx or Agua Minty to Now, Agua Minty, you could use Agua Minty for some water-based puzzles for sure. So let's see what they say here. I know on record they have said uh, in the trailer, in the gameplay trailer, they say dozens of spells. So here it says they would grow their magical abilities by masting spells, brewing potions, taming fant fantastic beasts, or taming magical beasts, and more up here by mastering powerful spells learn to cast spells in addition to classes and spells and players mix and match spells yeah here it is oh so they have this in the faq too mixing and matching dozens of spells so officially that's what they're committing to dozens of spells let players define their combat style on the path to become the ultimate duelist now see there they're pretty clearly speaking in terms of like combat but yeah, Gretchen, that's I hadn't thought about some of like the minor uh just like just kind of just for fun spells. All right, now let's get to that other super chat. Let's see. Oh, we already yeah, we already talked about Jason's. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jason, for the super chat. Appreciate that. All right, let's let's check up check in on these other comments that we got here. Now, the, the question before, I don't think they specifically asked about seasons. Yeah, they were asking about day and night cycles, but that also ties into seasons as well. And this is where a lot of people start to speculate, well, hey, they said seasons. Surely you're not going to put summer in the game if we're only going to have one year at Hogwarts. Because then, like, okay, you get to summer. What happens then, right? <laughs> what happens? Because you don't start Hogwarts until September 1st, which I think technically is still, I think that is technically still considered summer in the UK, I'm pretty sure. Um, so maybe like that's the summer and then it shifts into fall and then it shifts into winter and then in spring. I, I really don't think it's going to be more than one year. That is something I've stood by for a while, but I don't think people should see that as a negative because it really doesn't matter if it's one year or if it's three. People say, oh, I want I want three years, and don't get me wrong. I'd love to see that too. But it's really about how they allot that time, how much time actually takes place, because they control that in, in how they set the day-night cycle. Because it's, it's not going to be Animal Crossing, you know, where it's tied to our real-world clock, 24 real hours in a day. Is it going to be a one hour in the real world? Is one hour in the game? 
I don't know. I don't know. But I think that so they can make it as long as they want it to be. So I don't even if it's only one year, I don't think you should worry that it's going to be a short game. I mean, obviously, then you can make the story even that much more enriching and that much more impactful. Um, I mean, shoot, though, I would I would love to have us go into summer, go go complete all our years at Hogwarts. Then we get to choose careers. I know when the early days of this game being released, people are like, oh, ch choosing careers. And I even made a video about, hey, what if we got to do post Hogwarts stuff? So I don't foresee any of that. All right, let's see. We had another super chat come through there. I saw. Oh, but no question. Or at least I don't see a question with it. Fire? Fire, thank you so much for uh, for the super chat. Yeah, if I miss your, your question, guys, my apologies. I think most of them are showing up, but for some reason there's been a couple that didn't show any questions. So maybe it was just, just people wanting to show their support. Wonder what we'll be doing on the weekends. Three windows, yes. That is another great question. Another fantastic question. What will you be doing on the weekends and then on the holidays? Like, remember, Harry would always stay at Hogwarts, at least most throughout most of the books, he always stayed at Hogwarts. Um, so, yeah, what, what do we do during holidays? Is that is that when we get, like, our, our big kind of exploration time? I don't know. A hundred likes, 78 of y'all are slacking. <laughs> Might be like Bully. Dude, Tristan, I've heard so many good things about Bully. I'm ashamed to say I never played it, but I really did. I, I heard so many good things and so many people who want Hogwarts Legacy to borrow some of the systems that they had back then. I'm seeing talk of could be like GTA, could be like Bully, could be like Red Dead, could be better than Red Dead. Awful, awful, artful thinks you have to end the day. That's that's what I'm leaning toward as well. It's going to be like Persona 5, maybe where you're always on a timer. Yeah, they could do something like that. Now, that would be interesting, where it's a timer, but you don't necessarily have to end the day, but you can like see your like your day timer or something. Oh, like I, I just... Uh, James and Sue were talking about this in their last live stream too. Like how the classes work is going to tell us so much because we've seen there are cutscenes for the classes. So, I mean, there's no way they programmed, geez, how many, how many days do they go to school in Hogwarts? I have no idea. 150, 180, 200, some, somewhere in there. I have no idea. There's no way they programmed that many cutscenes in for like every day. It's going to be a unique class i could see it being like you have your sort of um like tent pole moments so maybe like three or four big classes each year where maybe something significant in the story happens and then otherwise you're just kind of going into that classroom to kind of work on practicing spells maybe they have challenge areas we've already seen that area in the trailer that's like on the outside uh where because we're starting late that we're gonna have to get some extra training in Official gameplay reveal. Let's just have this playing in the background here. <clears throat> Martin, what if we can find a book in the restricted section about Parcel Tongue and that would allow us to open the Chamber of Secrets? We know for sure the Basilisk was asleep, right? See, that's the thing. If they do the Chamber of Secrets and we have any kind of interaction with the Basilisk, well, then it has to be something that either everybody somehow forgets about. So maybe there's kind of a a memory charm or obliviate going on somewhere in there. Or maybe we like swear that we were never going to tell anybody about what we saw in the chamber, something like that. Two different game modes, one strict and one more free. Oh, that's an interesting idea. They've confirmed that there are going to be difficulties in for sure. Kelpies underwater creatures. We will have to tame them underwater. Oh my gosh. Hope there's not a filch. GameStop official Twitter just commented on Expecto Go's post. Yo. This is awesome, man. Expecto Go giving us like live. Wait, what? This account doesn't exist? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, I forgot the underscore. Oh, do you not have it on your... Oh, wait, hold on. I bet it's on your replies. 
Here we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's uh, here's James, you guys. GameStop already hyping up Hogwarts Legacy. Had an awesome 15-minute combo about the release date. Preferred platform to play the game with two workers. Hype is real! So there you go. You can see the game box there. So they don't have a release date on that. So James was just talking to them. Coming soon. And then after he posts it, posts this, they write back, Yo, and we had another super chat come in. Malcolm Soto. Malcolm, another one with no question. Guys, thank you so much for the support. That is very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, James, this is awesome, man. Something, uh, something, something, something's brewing. Don't know what. Something is brewing. Yo, Fire with another super chat. Fire, thank you so much. Let's see if the question... Oh, yes. Awesome. The question came through this time. Two questions. First is, how much do you think the Collector's Edition will cost? How do you think the Killing Curse will work? And will it have a cooldown or something else? And Mary said, first time is 120 days, including weekends. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, if we could... Even if you only had, like, three classes, which we know there's going to be more than three classes, they've confirmed more than that. But even if you only had three, start to do the math there. So yeah, I think they're going to have a collection of cutscenes and different things that can play when you go to the class. So how much do I think the Collector's Edition will cost? So let's pull that back up here. Because honestly, like, and I know I'm saying this without being able to see a lot of this stuff. Digital stuff, guys, it just doesn't interest me at all. <laughs> Sorry, Avalanche. Like, it, it it, just doesn't, man. I just, like, I just don't care. I, I, I don't care. Early access, that's kind of cool, but then in a way, I sort of, like, I'm not, I'm really not a huge fan of that either. I I want everybody to be experiencing this game, like, at the same time. Like, we, we all get it. Just, whenever it releases, like, that's when, that's the release date, and we're all playing it. It'll be fine, though. I mean, we'll, uh... I mean, hey, if you if you want to send out some early copies, Avalanche, you know, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to test it out for you. Don't get me wrong. So the the digital stuff, like, I it just doesn't do a lot for me because my guess, they've already confirmed no micro transactions. So think about this, you guys. All this stuff, I've seen some people worrying. If I don't buy this version, does that mean I'm I'm not going to get the Thestral Mount? Well, only, there's only one of two possibilities here. One possibility is that they've already said no microtransactions, so they're not going to be selling Thestral Mount separately. So either you can't get it at all. It's like completely locked out to people who don't buy the Deluxe or Collectors, which I just cannot see them doing. Or it's what a lot of games do to where, hey, if you buy this version, you get early access, or not early access, you get it, uh, you unlock it like immediately. But I absolutely 100% think that Thestral Mount will be something that everyone will get eventually. You'll just have to wait longer uh, in the story. Maybe there's a story moment where you get it instead. So I I think all of this stuff, the cosmetic pack, the battle arena, the garrison hat, I think everybody will be able to get it at some point. You'll just unlock it through like in-game currency, not real-world currency. But anyway, in terms of cost... So what, what else are we get? Kelpie Robe? I feel like Kelpie Robe has to be a digital thing as well, but it's kind of weird how it they put it after the 72 hours early access. Like, why wouldn't it be before with the other digital stuff? So we're basically looking at a whole bunch of digital stuff here. And then the steel case, and then floating ancient magic one with book. So we got the base game. That's 70 bucks right there. Let's say $10 extra for getting access to all the digital stuff. So that would take us up to 80. 72 hours early access. We'll be, we'll be generous and give them another $10 for that. So now we're up to 90. Steel case. Yo, Grim, thank you so much for the subscription. Uh, steel case. Oh, let's, let's overcharge that one a bit. Let's give them 20 bucks for that. So that takes us up to 110. Kelpie robe I forgot about, but... We can include that with the other uh, 
If Kelpie robe is a physical item, well, that changes things. I don't think it is. Although they do call this one deluxe. Like maybe it's like God of War, how they have the um, the regular collectors and then the Jotunar that comes with even more stuff. Dude, like imagine if this actually comes with a full on Kelpie robe. And dude, if they're talking so much about Kelpies, does that mean we're going to have underwater stuff? Don't chat. Don't let me forget the underwater thing because Joe, my buddy Joe on Twitter had an interesting thought about that today. So what were we up to though? We were up to 110 with the steel case. So then it all comes down to this floating ancient magic wand with book. If that's the only physical item, then I think it's going to be something big. And I think it's going to be something really nice. The art book, I think the current cost, the art book cost keeps changing. It was $50. Now it's $45. I don't think it'll be that. I think by the time the official pricing comes out, I think the art book will be around 40 or so. So let's see if, if let's just assume that's the art book. So we're at 110, then let's throw in, let's throw in another 50 for the art book. So that would take us up to about 160. And I'm being like overly generous to Avalanche here. This is not how much, it's not what I think this stuff is worth. I'm just kind of guessing like what companies have done in the past. So then that leaves the floating ancient magic wand, which would be the biggest item, at least $50 for that. So I would say like 199. That would be my guess on collectors. 199 would be my collector's edition guess. I hope they keep it under 200. I could see them going 249, but I don't think they're going to go above 249. Then the other question, how do you think the killing curse will work? Will it have a cooldown or something else? I think it's going to be, my guess is that it's going to be something acquired near the end of the game to where... I do think there's also going to be a cooldown, but I'm thinking there's going to be a cooldown for almost everything. Simply because of that leaked piece of the HUD we saw where one of them actually looks like a little, um, well, like, like it's, like it's refilling. Laser Rio super chat as well. Laser, thank you so much. We'll get to your question here after we finish up answering this one. Man, you guys are coming in crazy with the support. Thank you all so much. So I do think it'll have a cooldown, and I think it's going to be a late game thing. But I don't think, I don't think they put it in that reveal. They, first of all, they knew how epic that moment was going to be. I don't think they would put it in there if it was only like a one or something you do a couple times. I could see it being the finisher that they talked about in the gameplay trailer. You know how they talked about the powerful finishers and they show the character doing the lightning with the ancient magic stuff there. I think it could fall into a finisher. And so it's, it's a finisher if you choose the dark path. And so like finishers will probably be on a cooldown. That's my guess. That's my guess. Philip on the collector's edition says, don't care. Take the money. Steza, if we do see 6th and 7th years as DLC... Now, DLC, that would be an interesting idea if they did it as DLC. But at that point, it's like, you know what? Just, just go ahead and make a sequel. Just go ahead and make a full-blown sequel. Mew Store also says Max 250 with the Collector Edition. Killing Curse might be a New Game Plus thing only. Ooh, because it might be overpowered. Think we can, Razor thinks we can find the Elder One in the game and the actually... And the Collector Edition will be the Elder Wand. I mean, it is, it is an ancient wand. If Expecto goes right, though, it, maybe that ancient wand belongs to, uh, I don't know, one uh, Merlin by chance. Dude, maybe Merlin had the Elder Wand at some point. J. Ross, it'd be much anticipation, excitement, and speculation in this chat, right? I mean, we've how long have we been going? Let's see. We've been going for an hour just, like, talking questions. I love this, man. I love this. Then I don't even... When you guys ask so many good questions, it's like, I don't even need an agenda. I love... I love... <laughs> Expecto goes live streams, man. They're seriously the best. I love he has everything so organized. He's got his question of the week that he's going to talk about. Um, then he has like something fun at the end, like where they do, uh, they unbox various Wizarding World things. And then the chat, like the chat just, we just derail him. We just straight derail him. See, I learned from you, James. I, I learned from watching your chat. I'm like, I'm going to go in with a very loose outline because people just love asking questions. And we're, that's, we're just going to roll with that. We're just going to roll with the questions. Kelpies are underwater creatures. Do we think we'll have to go underwater to tame them? Okay. 
That right there. Oh, wait, hold on. Laser did ask a super chat. Let me get to Laser's question, and then we'll come back to the water. We'll come back to the water. Do you think the scene with Nick in the state of play is hinting towards a death day party? That scene, that scene right there, the reason I'm so excited about that scene is because, let's go back to media here. Let's go back to the official gameplay reveal. I'm excited so much about that scene because we hear the character say, don't forget why I'm here, sir. You're a wizard, Harry. Yo, you're a wizard, Harry. Ains Einstein. Hey, thank you so much for the subscription. Welcome to the story here, Retro Reconteur. All right, I'm gonna, let me mute my music for a second. Let's turn this up. Professors will not be. However, you may recognize a few faces. Ah, uh, all in good fun. Once Sir Patrick lets me join the headless hunt, I'll be right there with them. This offering is sure to win them over. Uh, don't forget why I'm here, sir. Don't forget why I'm here, sir. And carrying what looks to be... Once Sir Patrick lets me join the headless hunt, I'll be right there with them. I have no idea what that is, but it does not look like something pleasant that I would want to eat. So... Laser, I think you could be right. I think this could definitely be hinting that they're on their way to a death day party. If you guys remember from the book, so the ghosts, they have food at the death day party, but it's like rotting food. It's just like a, a terrible, awful smell. And that's because like they can, uh, I've always wondered if they can actually taste it or if it's just like them imagining that they can taste it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, that's a that's a good point. I do think it's hinting at a, a death day party. Yeah, looks like they're going somewhere. But yeah, the character saying, don't forget why I'm here. So maybe our character is going to this death day party. Dude, to learn something about, I don't know, maybe an ancient wizard like Merlin. <laughs> Tone says, here's what I'm hoping. Gotham Knights did a PC collector's edition as well. I hope they do it for Hogwarts Legacy. Ah, interesting. Want a Thestral Robe? Thestral Robe would be sick. Okay, underwater stuff. Is there an event tomorrow, Boxer? Uh, not that I've heard about, no. There was an event today that was more like on the developer side, um, and some of the Hogwarts Legacy devs were presenting on that. I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. You actually had to register for it, uh, and Chandler said there's not going to be any big kind of news breaking here, but it would be um, kind of interesting on their the dev process. So... I'm sure if there's something big, we'll we'll start to see some things trickle out. But yeah, I'm not aware of any other kind of event going on soon. Okay, so for the underwater stuff, let's hop back over here to Twitter. And so Joe Machado on Twitter. Joe's always hanging out in the comments as well. So this looks like a wife wants a wizard graphic. I think that's from Wife Once a Wizard. But um, so Joe says, it just occurred to me. There is undoubtedly swimming in Hogwarts Legacy thanks to this singular detail. The diving board. <laughs> Why put a diving board if you can't swim? You? Hey, Nico. Thank you so much for becoming a member here. You unlocked some, I think, some pretty slick emotes that you can use here in the chat whenever you become a member guys that um yeah i i knew i was like i want to start live streaming again and we got to get some pretty slick emotes that are uh obviously hogwarts inspired you know but yeah so so they said this right here and sure enough you can see i talked about this in my uh 55 things you missed michael thank you so much for subbing to the channel um, if you've read the books, you remember this detail because You're a wizard. this is the prefect's bathroom that we see. Uh, let's see, Amor Poet. Hey, thank you so much for subbing to the channel as well. We, um, oh my goodness, you guys coming in with the subs right now. Let's go. Janice, thank you so much for subbing to the channel. I'm so glad I updated these today. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, my alerts. I need to update my alerts. We got to get some, uh, 
We got to get some Hagrid. You're a wizard in there. So I love Joe's thought here. I do. But, but I don't think it confirms swimming in Hogwarts Legacy. I could see this, just this little section here. Either it's just there for fun, just as a nod to fans because, this, I mean, this like, I, I love this shot in the trailer because this single shot alone shows you the attention to detail. In the books, it talks about how this this bathroom was an extravagant bathroom and how the, the tub was essentially more like a swimming pool. And it even had a diving board and it had all the different knobs. Remember all the different knobs and they had all the different colors of soaps and things like that. So I could see this totally being like just a fun little nod to fans having this room being so true to how it was in the books. And then you're just gonna, you know, you could just walk by or I could even see them having like a fun little interactive section to where you can just jump in fully clothed, you know, or, or maybe you like have a mission where you like you shove a friend in or something. I don't know. But I, so I don't think it confirms swimming. But I mean, if we did have swimming, it's almost like they would have to have a special. You would need to like transfigure your attire, right? I mean, you think about the task in Goblet of Fire. They're wearing, you know, you're obviously not wearing robes. So, dude, I would love swimming though, because then that opens up a whole nother layer. Because then you then you start talking about mer people. You start talking about the giant squid. You start talking about, I mean, all the stuff under the lake that they could explore. It's just like the possibilities are are endless with that. So yeah, what do you guys what do you guys think? Like, is is the diving board enough to say, hey, swimming is for sure in? Mary, if we're getting DLC, wouldn't want it to be for other years. Would want them to maybe have it for Quidditch or something else. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see uh, Quidditch as as DLC. I think it will be like uh, GYS after the story is over where you can roam around like normal. Do you think we'll start near the beginning? Oh, I definitely think that you'll have... Um, you'll definitely be able to free roam at the end. Whether they put you back like right before the last mission. I mean, because if you think about it, they're not going to let you. If you get to the end of the school year, then everybody goes home. <laughs> that would be kind of hilarious, though. If everybody else goes home for the summer and you're just like, like the, la the, the end of the game free roam is you just wandering around Hogwarts with nobody. It's like just the ghost and like occasionally you'll pass some teachers and that's it. <laughs> No, I would guess that it'll put you, uh, like a lot of games do, where it puts you like before the last mission for the free roam. Rotten fish. Oh, on the, what Nick was carrying? Yeah, looks like a casserole. It definitely looks pretty disgusting. 100% death day party, Dylan says. Wondering how we get into the prefect's bathroom because I doubt the student knew. Oh, right, yeah. So if they're a new student, that's another good point, Mary. So that bathroom, um, yeah, that that was the prefect's bathroom, which I'm trying to remember now. Oni Savior with another super chat. Yo, thank you so much for the support. There's a part in the trailer where water is flowing up to the ceiling as the player is walking forward. I'm positive it's in the game. Oh, let's see. You got a time. I think I know what you're talking about, but... If you have a timestamp on the trailer, I can jump to it. I think you're talking about the scene where they're in that area with Professor Fig, right? Not there, not there. Okay, here's Professor Fig. Uh, I think we've missed it. Yeah, I don't think it's this far in. But yeah, I think they're talking about that big sort of wide room where they're in there with uh, Professor Fig. Clue viewer, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. You're a wizard, Harry. Dude, I wonder if it like holds all the subs if the subs pop in at once. Grand Dark L. Let's see if it does another one now. 
wizard. Oh, it did. Glenn Creepy G Hansen. Thank you so much for the sub as well. Oh my gosh, Dusty Beard. Is this Dusty Beard from our days on Twitch? Lauren D, thank you so much for the subscription as well. Welcome. Dude, Dusty Beard. Wizard Harry. It's got to be the same Dusty Beard. It's got to be. William as well, subbing to the channel. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, yeah, we passed uh, 25,000 subs today. Abel with the sub as well. Jenna says, yes, we need to swim in the pool. Oh, I mean, hey, we know that they're including... We've got all those different um, outfits. So maybe there's going to be some uh, aquatic attire for us as well. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I saw another... If you search Hogwarts Legacy concept art, the first video is one p picture from underwater. All pictures were in the gameplay. Oh, Martin says. All pictures were in gameplay. I have to look into that. Ashton just finished reading the fourth book in one part. Uh, Mr. I'm not sure if it's uh, Mrs. Weasley comes to see Harry. She's in her time saying there was no Whomping Willow. Right. So the and the gatekeeper or gamekeeper was a man named Og. Yeah. So the Womp, the Whomping Willow, the Whomping Willow that we remember from the Harry Potter series should not be in the game. However, a Whomping Willow is just a type of tree. I have, <laughs> I have a video all about this, too. We've been making videos on Hogwarts Legacy for a while now. We've, we've explored quite a bit of the all the little intricate things because it was in the... Uh, let's actually see if it's still on there. I don't want to close this out, but... For the longest time... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still in the... Uh, yeah, right here. Like, this tree, that is clearly a Whomping Willow. I I think it's meant to be a Whomping Willow. Fluky with the $10 Super Chat. Fluky, thank you so much. Um, so, I uh, Whomping Willow, there could be a bunch of these. And it's not, it's just not the Whomping Willow that we see in the, in the series. Uh, not sure if anyone already has this. What is the approximate length of the game? Me and my friend can't agree. He thinks it'll be as long as Persona 5 Royal. By the way, love the content. Been binging your vids. Yo, thank you so much, Fluky. I appreciate that. And appreciate the super chat as well. Game length is a really... No one's asked that tonight, actually, I don't think. But that is a, a common question. I feel like... Oh, man. I gotta be careful on this because... Everybody loves with this game. Everybody talks about managing expectations. And I, I've kind of always been on the other side. Like, dude, imagine imagine the world. Imagine what you want. Let your hype go crazy. I don't care. I mean, I love getting excited about games. But even I, before that state of play gameplay reveal, even I was like, okay. I have kind of in my head what I think this is going to be. And so I try to kind of lower my expectations a bit. So my expectations were here. Going into the state of play, I'm like, okay, let's let's bring him down to about here. And if they can hit this, I'll be happy. And then that state of play happened, and what they showed was, like, through the roof. It's honestly one of the reasons that people hate when I say this. So apologies in advance, you guys. People hate when I say, but it's one of the reasons that I I immediately was like, the game's not coming out this year. I don't I don't feel like it's going to come out this year. Because they, they showed just, like, they are trying to do so much. I mean, they are trying to put in all the different systems. Like... Like the whole menagerie thing. Like even in my wildest dreams, Fernan subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you so much. Even in my wildest dreams, I never imagined that we would be able to have our own little area inside the room of requirement. DBO with the sub as well. Thank you so much. It's where we can like have pets and have our own little custom home. Big Mac with the sub as well. It just blew my mind. It blew my mind. And so I think the game could potentially be longer than I had originally anticipated. I really do. I feel like a good... Dude, oh, <laughs> I might have to turn off the Hagrid, your wizard. Don't stop the subs, please. Keep the subs coming. 
But Hagrid, dude, you kind of, I mean, you, you keep interrupting me a little bit, Hagrid. You keep interrupting me with the, you're a wizard, Harry. Oni, save your super chatting. Thank you, Oni. Oh, man, I feel bad. You didn't have to super chat for that. 14 minutes. Okay, let's go and, uh, I'm going to stop it right here so we can watch this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, somebody was right. Somebody said right after the Avada Kedavra. Um, but answering, so let me, let me give an answer to Fluky here. I've been, wa I'm, I'm waffling is what I'm doing, Fluky. I'm not, I'm not committing. I feel like if they can hit a 30 hour story, like that's not doing everything. That's like, you know, you're sticking to the story, 25, 25 to 30 hours. I feel like I would be happy with that. And then maybe if, uh, to like see and do everything 40, 50 hours and then Honestly, if they do more than that, if this ends up being like a hundred hour or more game, like, dude, I'll, I'll be thrilled. I think what will increase the replayability of this game, obviously, depending on how much they lean into that light and dark, are we? That is something that I wonder if they haven't pulled back from a bit because early on it sounded like, oh man, choice is going to be a big deal. You're going to choose your path, and and it's not like they're saying we're not going to be able to do that. I'm not saying that, but I just don't feel like they've talked about that very much. So, I mean, is it going to be like, like infamous where you have different endings? Is it going to be like mass effect style with all these choices? Uh, like, like how, how exactly is all that going to work? Because that is something that would extend the replayability, right? Cause then you'd want to go back through and you want to play as evil. Uh, maybe you want to play as an evil Hufflepuff. Hey, they exist. They, I'm sure they exist. Not a lot of them, but I'm sure there are some of them out there. So things like that would increase the replayability as well. But yeah, I, I do feel like it is going to be a... I mean, when they say open world action RPG... Um, when they started talking about all the stuff surrounding Hogwarts as well as the Menagerie stuff, that's when my mind was really just like... Started opening up to, oh wow, okay. Okay. This is going to be bigger than we thought. This is going to be bigger than we thought. All right, so let's get to Oni's. Uh, so Oni was talking about there's a scene where you can see water. Let me go back up here. As the player is walking forward, water flowing up to the ceiling. All right. So we'll watch it in normal mode. Oh, I, that, whoa, okay. That scene right there. Okay, so it's not the scene I was thinking about. Let's slow this down. Go to 0.25. See if we can kind of piece this together here as they uh, the character AK is the goblin. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. So over here, kind of on the sides, you see what looks like this swirling fog. Because initially I was going to say, oh, that looks like fog to me. But you're clearly talking about this. This definitely looks like water right here so why is our character just our character's just like casually walking oh and then they they cut away too quick they cut away too quick obviously they don't want us to be able to see i mean it, it almost looks like the material that's in the uh pensive but then i i could i could definitely see water too i mean you see this kind of swirling i feel like if this was I feel like if this was full on water that our character would be, I don't know, starting to like stagger a bit. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe, maybe they cut away right before the animation where they start swimming, you know? But yeah, I hadn't really ever thought of this as a, uh, let's play it through one more time here at 0.25. I'll hear what you guys think there. I mean, cause it's like, you see this swirling Almost kind of forming. Dude, maybe it's something with the ancient magic. Looks like a spell effect surrounding the character. Possible. Yo, another super chat coming in from Carlos. Vibes. Uh, good vibes. Good vibes. Uh, Carlos, thank you so much for the support on the channel. Very much appreciated. Oh, we're talking about Patronus now. <laughs> Rune Spore. Somebody's Patronus is a dragon. Somebody says um, an asparagus. Oh, that well, that's that's an interesting one. Oh, that's funny. 
Dude, when I initially took the Patronus quiz on um, Wizarding World, what did I get? It was something so obscure. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Let me log in here real quick. It was something, I want to say a shrew, but it, was, it wasn't a shrew. Currently, no. What? I don't have any saved emails for this. Are you kidding me? All right, if I don't guess my password right the first time, then... Wait, wait. Oh, I got it. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was a tortoise shell cat. Was what it said was my my wand here when I took it. But um I never felt like that was right. <laughs> and then I have since taken other tests that obviously you can't do the I still don't even think it was a cat though. I do not remember it being a cat. Maybe that's my wrong uh, Wizarding World account there. <laughs> oh, goodness. But um, then I took another, like, on some other sites that take all the Pottermore questions, which I feel like that is the true way if you take all the questions into account. So there are these sites out there. They do this for sorting as well, where they take all the accounts into, uh, or all the accounts. They take all the questions into account. And on that one, I got dolphin. I got a dolphin for that one. Oni Savior with another super chat. Slytherin, where you at? Yo. Dude, wait, can I not? It won't let me chat here in the... Uh... <laughs> wait, does OBS not let me chat? How do I chat in my own... I was going to try to, hey, Nico with the, the Ravenclaw emote there. Lauren says, Hippogriff. Oh, that'd be cool. Got some Ravenclaws in the house. You can see the bottom of the Black Lake in the back windows of the Slytherin common room. Right? Yeah. Ooh, Brown Bear. That's an awesome Patronus. Brown Bear is awesome. Patronus is a vole. Expecto Patronum. Squeeze. <laughs> Dementors. Ah, White Stallion. Man, a lot of you guys, you guys got some pretty, uh, you guys get some good Patronuses. Patronuses? Patron, I think it's Patronuses, right? Yeah, Patronuses. But yeah, so I, I say Dolphin is my Patronus, which by the way, for those of you who haven't seen this, this is like seriously one of my, oh, wait. I'm going to have to go back through my... This is one of my favorite things. Somebody, uh, a fan, made this for some of their favorite Hogwarts... Or not Hogwarts, Harry Potter content creators. They made this. It's uh, AJ at AJ Draws on Twitter. And so he had asked me a couple weeks in advance, like, what's your wand and Patronus? I was like, okay. So I told him, and like, this is why I wanted to know. This one's me right here, which I have now set as my Twitter profile picture. But yeah, I love this, dude. This is just so epic. So epic. Expecto go with the Mandrake. <laughs> just makes it. Oh, man. It's so good. So good. Otter, Scottish Deerhound. Hufflepuff with Hobbit home, Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, the Hufflepuff common room looks so good. Don't remember what your wand type was. Only Patronus being a dolphin. Hey, let's go. Slytherin common room in the back kind of resembles snake skin. Ah, fun fact. Did you know the Hufflepuff common room was actually inspired by the Shire? I do think I... I mean, clearly, <laughs> you, could, you could tell from visuals. It's pretty close, but I didn't know if that was ever actually confirmed. Now, when somebody was talking about, um, I was actually looking for the scene when they were first talking about water. I was looking for that scene with Fig. Oh, let me go back to normal speed. With Fig, where you're in that room with all of the... Oh, it's going to be right here. 
Nope. Hold on. Maybe after this. You'd think I would have this all memorized at this point, given how many times. Wait, what? I thought it was like right after the, the other fig stuff. Okay, here's fig again. Oh, wait. Was that it? Nope. Oh, I got to stop at this one, though, because this is seriously like... This might be my favorite combat moment of the entire trailer. Expelliarmus and then a Pugno on the sword. Oh my gosh. Like, first of all, just look how fluid this combat is, right? Like, you've got the little dash ability, you got the Expelliarmus, then he got the Pugno. Oh, it's so good. Another Pugno right there. I'm still not thrilled with how they're using Accio. Because it's not supposed to be, if I remember right, I don't think it's supposed to be usable on living beings. But hey, they can take some liberties. Hogwarts Legacy, watch all concept art. There's the underwater pick, Martin says. Oh, there was, yeah, you wanted me to, I'll check that out here. I'm trying. Why can I not find the scene? Oh, wait. Just going to let it play. <laughs> Just going to let it play and we'll uh, we'll see it when it pops up. That's your favorite combat scene as well. Yeah, it's so good. Someone just put me to sleep until December 6th. I mean, maybe that's the date. We don't know for sure yet. Although the uh, the stuff Expecto Go was talking about earlier gets me hyped. Accio on the armor, yeah. Clo <laughs> Close. I'm just imagining like you're like ripping off goblin shirts. <laughs> you're just Accioing and the goblin shirts just go flying. Oh, goodness. Why do I think that scene uh, with Fig and Goblin is going to be a major character choice? I feel like that scene is super early in the game. So I don't know. Maybe there's a character choice moment there early in the game. It's possible. Like maybe you have to like agree with Fig or, or side with Ranrock at that point. Oh, wait, here we go. I thought it was early. Right here. This scene here. I have always... I've, I've tried to figure out what exactly this is underneath their feet. So clearly it's not... I mean, maybe it is water. And they're just on the like this glass area here. But then it also looks like it could be a landscape. Like it could be a map of the surrounding area. And then, like, like, what are these little, uh, oh, the little timelines blocking it a little bit right here, but they're like these little three kind of circles here. Like, what exactly is this room? Clearly, this, this shot right here, I think the ancient magic is a power of detection for our character. So, like, they can detect this ancient magic. Like, you saw right there, our character touched the wall. And then this ancient magic that we possess, I think, is what is able to open up these certain areas to get us to something that's a power. And that, so that's why Ranrock wants us is to be able to get him into these different areas of power. And I think those different areas are going to be the dungeons of the game. Oh, my gosh. I love this little detail. You know the little Hogwarts Legacy flame. I'm sure many people have pointed this out. But look at that right there. You see it right there in the mirror as we also see Gringotts there. But there's the little, like, in the main Hogwarts Legacy logo right there. So then he taps it. It goes solid. So then right here, it's like all these different portals opening up. I think these are going to be how we get into the different dungeons of the game. 3D map, like an opal floor. Hufflepuff common room. Oh, yeah, hold on. Let me go back to... Uh, I think it was Martin was saying about the... 
Where did it go? Where did it go? 220. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find this. I'm just gonna open it up in a separate window. I'm all just any time that uh oh wait, not that one. This one. Anytime I'm opening up random videos, I just want to make sure that I'm <laughs> not showing something that I shouldn't be showing on here. All right, so hold on. You told me the exact Hogwarts Legacy. Watch all concept art. It might help if I typed Hogwarts Legacy in there too. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Watch all concept art. And 220. Quiet, you advertisement. All right, so 220. All right, let's pause this one. Bring this over. You're a wizard, Harry. Yo, Corbett, thank you so much for subscribing. All right, now let's see if they come in bunches again. Maybe they're kind of like they hold, they hold them and then pop them all at one time. Crickets? Okay, no. All right. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so this is 217. Oh, by the way, let's give credit to this. Uh, Infant Terrible is the person who uploaded this. E-N-F-A-N-T Terrible. So, right. Oh, that, this, so yeah, this is definitely not concept art for Hogwarts Legacy. I don't think, because that's, that's Harry, right? I feel like this is a, I feel like they're shifting into, uh, the one above looks like that is Hogwarts Legacy. But this, I'm almost positive. Or am I, am I remembering wrong, guys? Help me out here. I feel like this is a Harry Potter shot but then again i do remember something about this being with um haven't seen what expectico has said yet oh he was he just popped into the chat earlier he was at gamestop today and they've started putting up some visuals for hogwarts legacy talking about it coming soon and he was told he talked to a couple different employees and so what they are saying is december 6th for early access and then that friday which i guess would be what december 9th as the release date or december 13th for early access and december 16th for the full release now this is gamestop and then they also um they responded to one of his tweets in an interesting uh like excitement All right, I'm scrolling down to see what you guys think about this. Goblet of Fire Gillyweed scene. Martin, I got fooled, I guess. Yeah, I'm almost positive that this... I mean, I could see why you'd be fooled, though, because this before... Like, I think that... That might be Hogwarts Legacy concept art. Oh, maybe not. That definitely is. Right there. That one's definitely Hogwarts Legacy concept art. Yeah, but that one, I'm almost positive that is a shot of from Goblet of Fire. You're a wizard. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to... I'll let this play. Uh, Harry Potter Goblet. I, I want to say that's a Pottermore. I'm pretty sure that is a Pottermore artwork let's see pottermore artwork archive this is all saved online because when they when they revamped pottermore and changed it from changed it from pottermore to wizarding world we lost a lot of the artwork oh dude where is this site Archive. Here we go. Internet Archive. Pottermore Materials first version. 
No, that's not what I want. Harry Potter wiki. Oh, they make it very hard to sort. Here it is. It was, uh, I knew I'd found it somewhere. It was on Reddit. Somebody actually archived it in, oh, they archived it in their Google Drive. I saved them all, so I, <laughs> I saved them all on my computer because I was like, dude, if these ever, I like to use them sometimes in videos to kind of uh, change things up, it, it, you know, especially before we got the big 14 minute trailer. Because I was like, man, I'm so tired of the same trailer playing in all my Hogwarts Legacy videos. All right, so artwork. Yes, so this is artwork. There you go, right there. From the Black Lake. This was from Pottermore. And it is a shot of the um, Goblet of Fire. That, that task. Really awesome concept art, though, for sure. Which, I mean, seeing a shot like this, dude, I mean, Harry's got his robes on right there. So they can make it work. Maybe we can get access to some gillyweed if they if they wanted to have underwater. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine, like, you start the game and you're swimming underwater, but you're very limited because you have to keep coming back up for air. And then you later, you learn how to uh, start making gillyweed. That would be so cool. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, I have a file, a folder on my computer called Pottermore. Now I have one with all of the names. So let me go through grouped by book. Yeah, that one is uh, Harry and the Great Lake Mer People second task. Dude, check out this one. Oh, man. The, the artwork that was on Pottermore was so good. So good. Some of my favorite pieces of art for the entire series are on there. Here's something they borrowed uh, for Hogwarts Legacy. Look at that. Got the troll heads on the wall. This was, of course, in Grim Old Place. This is something I pointed out in my 55 Things You Missed video. It is so bizarre. I'm trying to figure out why is that in the trailer? <laughs> why do they have this in... Uh... Pretty sure it's right here. Look at this. Look at this. Why in our own little... um. Dude, this this wizard, the person in this scene has to be going down, down the dark path, right? He has to be going down the dark path. One of your, uh, oh wait, Ellie predicted cursed child. Hold on, I, I gotta read this. Voldemort's daughter before Cursed Child came out. Thank you very much. Could revamp her and make her an old Lestrange ancestor. I wonder how they'd react. Wait, what is uh one of my one of my original characters? Is that what you mean? I'm not sure if you're talking about for another game or if you've done like uh fan fiction writing or something. I think the eat slug <laughs> eat slug spell is in the game. <gasps> Somebody earlier was asking about if I thought there would be very many of the, uh, you know, like fun spells that aren't so serious. Eat slugs would be a good one. Eat slugs would be a very good one. Uh, a lot of you are talking about how you think that Fig or one of the teachers is going to turn out to be uh, evil or kind of working for the dark side. I almost feel like it's inevitable, right? I mean, that's, there's gotta be some sort of twist. I, I'm hoping the twist is that, cause everybody, everybody always gets up in arms about goblins. And I mean, rightly so. And even, even in the wizarding world, like they admit that they did not treat goblins all the, all that well. Now goblins are, it's hard to know too, like how, they're like such a different culture and, and some of the ways that they do things 
you know, it, it may not have been compatible with wizarding society, so they may have needed certain laws in yeah, place, but guy. there are some things that the wizards just definitely didn't treat the goblins right on. So it'd be really interesting if they explore some of that, and maybe by the end of the game you actually realize, oh, Ranrock is not so bad, and he's got a point. And then you find out there's actually something else going on. So one of the expecto go and, uh, you know, you guys who watch James, you know, he's always got a, a big theory, a new theory. And his big one for a while has been like the impact of Merlin in this game and that Merlin's going to be very important. Well, now, since Hogwarts Legacy showed that latest little clip with the statue, actually the statue right there in the background, it's not that exact statue. But it, this appears to be uh, a statue of a woman that we see in multiple spots in somewhat different poses. Sometimes she's uh, she's holding something. And then in the uh, in the one that they just showed on Twitter, she's she has her hands like this, but she's not holding anything. Maybe this is a nod to Morgan Le Fay or Morgana, who, according to which Arthurian uh, stories you're reading, um, in some, she's good. In many, she becomes a rival of Merlin's, an evil character. And I'm pretty sure she has her own wizard card in from the old Harry Potter vi video games. Morgan Le Fay wizard card. Let's see here. There she is. Wait, why can I not? Well, I don't know why it's not letting me see the other side, but there, there's the, there's the front of it. Morgan Le Fay, let's go HP Wiki. Okay, so HP Wiki, Morgan Le Fay. More commonly known as Morgana, was a medieval dark witch famous for being the enemy of the legendary wizard Merlin and the half-sister of King Arthur. Morgan Le Fay was born and lived during the Middle Ages. She was known to have had a half-brother, Arthur. Uh, during her lifetime, Morgan Le Fay played a role in numerous events through her powerful magic and healing skills. She was an animagus taking the form of a bird. I always hesitate on how to pronounce animagus because... I think, the, don't the movies say Animagus? And then I've heard Animagus before, so Animagus is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with. Dude, you want you want to get comments? If any of you are fellow content creators out there, and you want to know how to get more comments on your Harry Potter and or Hogwarts Legacy and or lore of anything videos, just mispronounce a couple things. Just try that one. Mispronounce a couple things. You'll get lots of comments. Trust me. <laughs> Anytime, dude. I even like sometimes it's unintentional and sometimes it's like, nah, that's that's how I prefer to pronounce it. My favorite one is um So hold on. This is my favorite one. Right here. So Harry Potter names and words we pronounced wrongly for years. This one right here. I, in a video, pronounced it Knuts. And people lost their minds. They lost their minds. Not everybody, you know, just a select few. And so I'm like, okay, I gotta, gotta give you guys a bit of a history lesson here <laughs> on this. Some of you have already heard this story. You're like, oh, here he goes again. Here he goes again talking about the Knuts. So... Back when the Harry Potter books first started coming out, Scholastic set up a website, which you can still find through the Wayback Machine, that was a pronunciation guide. And this word on there, I, I'm telling you guys, you can't, you can't hear the words anymore because it's Flash and Wayback Machine won't play Flash. But I promise you guys, they pronounced it Knuts. However, on the audiobook, um... And here in this Wizarding World article, they say knuts, which I just don't like. Most people just think it's nuts. 
And so they think it's silent. And so they're like, Psh, this dude's pronouncing the K in nuts. This is crazy. And so you can see here, surely nuts behaves like nose and has a silent K, right? Wrong again. While we were running around saying nuts, Harry, Ron, Hermione, and everyone else in the Wizarding World purchasing goods and services with galleon sickles and knuts. We didn't canal that. There you go. So if you guys didn't know that, now you do. <laughs> Now you know that. Also some talk about Polyjuice Potion. Yeah, I think Polyjuice Potion is definitely in the game. I think that is all but confirmed in one of the blog posts because they talked about the importance of a... Uh, just called it nuts. I mean, that's what most people did, right? That's what you would assume. That's like, you know, the KN, it's going to be like knife. Hagrid said Knuts in the movie. Did he? Was it the first? Uh, it would be the first movie, right? It's probably the only moment where it's... I think I pulled back up that clip now that you mentioned that. I think I pulled that back up. But I've I've always wondered for years when the change... I mean, rel the change had to happen relatively quick because when they did the audiobooks, they said Knuts. So actually, maybe the audiobook changed it and then they just went with that. <laughs> because I, I promise on that Scholastic website... I'm going to have to see if I can... Um, let me look this up. Wayback Machine. Scholastic. As I said, we won't be able to hear it. Pronunciation guide. Oh, come on. Let's try a different way of searching for it. Oh, wait. So in November 7th, 2007, Snitch Seeker had an article, Harry Potter or Scholastic Updates, Potter Pronunciation Guide. Let's see if this article even still works. You can access the guide here. Yeah, if you just try to go go to it, Okay, now, let me go to way back. Now I have the exact link. Enter a URL, there we go. Oh yeah, 2007, 2008, that's when we gotta jump in. That's when we gotta jump in here to the way back machine. All right, we'll try February 22nd of 2008. Yep, see? Here it is, guys. I told you. It existed. But we can't listen to it because... Find out how to say Hermione, Ilops, and Azkaban using our handy audio guide. I'm telling you, dudes, I was obsessed. So I, I, I remember looking it up here, and it was, uh, it was totally Knuts, is how they pronounced it there. Now, MuggleNet... also has a pronunciation guide and last i checked let me see if they still have theirs this way last i checked they still actually had it matching yeah look at this canute because they were going based off the um the the scholastic pronunciation so i would love to hear the reasoning for it one day it's probably not that interesting at all and then another one that the movies actually changed was uh oh, now see this one they this one they do have accio on here but that is not how uh it in in the pronunciation guide it was originally osseo osseo that's how it was pronounced and then the movies changed it to accio and that just kind of stuck all right enough I, i'm like we're like getting super deep here Camp Nut, wait, wait, are you saying Nut? Are you saying Knut? Are you saying Knut? <laughs> so if you want to be, if you want to be 100% correct by what the Wizarding World official website as of that article is saying, it's, it's Knut. 
And that's what's in the movies. That's what's in the audiobooks. So there you go. I still like to say Knut, but hey. Mostly now because it just makes people angry. I listen to the audiobooks a lot. Highly recommend it. Oh, the audiobooks are so good. They're so good. Both Jim Dale and Stephen Fry like do do a fantastic job. Oh man, a Wizard in the Hopping Pot. I've been thinking about doing a video on this. If you guys remember in this shot right here of the um Wait, what the heck? Hold on. This Oh my gosh, that portrait right there. Why am I getting Morgan Le Fay vibes from that? That is giving me Morgan Le Fay vibes. Yeah, dude, imagine if, like, oh, Morgana has, I don't know, left something behind, and it's like this 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 competing ancient this ancient magic of the the two ancient rivals of morgan le fay and merlin i think that'd be so cool i really do family guy cool with <laughs> vibes oh goodness my one core unsung hero is phoenix feather phoenix feather in my one core Reason why our robes, preferably the arm sleeves, look different compared to other students. I wonder if they let us have a certain level of customization over the robes, or if, I don't know, maybe if it's like because we're we're starting late and they, they just wanna say like, hey, this is the guy that doesn't know as much. <laughs> That'd be terrible. No, nah, I don't think that's why. I think it's probably just like a customization thing, but. But you're right. I mean, it is slightly different. And I think, let's see if we can uh, end that scene with. Because ours are pretty consistent. I don't think ours change much throughout. Like our, our hood is a little different. And then also the, like right there, you can really see it. So Nat's eye, I mean, both even in Gryffindor. So the cuff on the arm there is different. And then ours has this kind of gold. Now, some people have been saying maybe we're a prefect, but I mean, I can't see us being a prefect if we don't know, we don't even know that much about the world. We're new to Hogwarts. Who knows if we're completely new to magic? I kind of think we are, but that part I could be wrong on. Maybe our parents have been teaching us, or I don't think we went to another school, though. I, I mean, why would we have to catch up? There, there's got to be a reason that we haven't been practicing magic. Maybe we were thought of as a squib, but we were in a magic family. I'm not sure. But yeah, so you've got kind of the gold that's different, this stripe that runs all the way down. Maybe it's totally customizable though. That's an interesting question. Explains the change, chain, exchange. <laughs> Why can I not say that? He explains the exchange. Ah, it's the double, the EX and the EX. It's getting me. He explains the exchange rates for all of the coins in the cabin when he picks up Harry in the book. But I think he explains it in Diagon Alley in the movie. I think you're right. I think right before, uh, I think it might be right before he, nah, I don't want to, I'll, I'll get it wrong, but I, I do, I do remember him saying it now in the movie that you mention it. Black Oak Wan with a unicorn tail. Cannot wait to be inside this world. Yo, Jason, have a good one. They talk about Merlin's puzzles if he left things behind. It's sensible that Morgana has too. Hey, good point, Rossi, right? I mean, she's not going to be outdone. She's going to try and leave some things behind as well. But yeah, I mean, even if Merlin doesn't prove to be as big as a lot of us are thinking, I mean, we know... 100% he's confirmed to have some impact on the game. We see him in the stained glass window. They talk about puzzles left behind by Merlin. So even if he doesn't factor majorly into the story, he's going to be a factor in the game for sure, which is exciting. Different difficulties, yes, they are confirmed. Yeah. That was confirmed in the, I believe it's in the PlayStation blog post. Um, 
that came out after the gameplay trailer. Let me double check here to see if that's the one. Yeah, right here. So it's this blog right here on the PlayStation blog that came out. This one was the one right after the uh, the big gameplay reveal. So about halfway down the page, or a little bit more than halfway down the page. This section right here. As a gamer who likes a bit of a challenge myself, happy to say that we've been working hard to make sure combat has a depth and challenge. Whether you want to experience the story or make every swish and flick of your wand matter, a range of difficulty options will be available to meet various skills, enabling players to experience the game in a way most enjoyable to them. Which is good. I, th I think it's good that a game like this has it. But what I want to know is like, okay, so difficulty option, do the enemies have different attack patterns? Because one of the big kind of critiques of the combat in the trailer is that for the most part, I mean, it looks like they just, you know, they're, they're not really, whoa, I don't know what I just did there. They're not really attacking you at the same time, you know? Like this guy, like why, watch this guy over here. He, he's kind of just, so he fires that one. And then this dude here, he's just kind of chilling. He's throwing his hand up. This guy over here. So that's been one of the big critiques. So the question is, is at a higher difficulty, does that mean they're going to attack faster? Or is it just like, wait, what in the world? What in the world is this? <laughs> I thought I was on the official. Oh, I was. It just switched over to. Yeah, it's weird how the the GIFCAT website does that. Oh, so I was on the official site, but then when I clicked in, it took me to GIFCAT. That's what was going on. Yeah, I love so many of these shots here that they put in this blog post that some of which weren't even in the uh, the trailer. Like, look at this. I love... If you really want to see the detail of the costumes and, like, the patterns on the clothing, go in and look at this and make sure you hit this little gear right here to turn it to... HD quality because by default it goes to SD for some reason. It looks really blurry. And then like Ranrock right here. Get a really nice look at his armor. I mean look at that man. Look at that. So good. And then there's one more like the the scene. This shot right here. Dude, like just if you just try and imagine like what the heck would we be doing? It clearly forbidden forest clearly night and we're just we're just flying through it slowly on our broomstick like is this a story section are we just out exploring something big is about to happen in this shot no doubt no doubt about it The way that's worded sounds like not only normal settings like easy, medium, or hard, but also more difficulty settings you could change. It could be, yeah. I know um, accessibility settings has been a really big thing for games lately, which it's it's great to see them adding more and more accessibility settings that make it so more people can experience video games. So I would I would expect they'll have a range of those kind of options as well. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Laser Rio, I hope Peeves is a big part of the game. Want to be able to randomly walk into an area. See him causing chaos. Oh, right. They're going to have to have that. Th that'll be a really nice way to kind of build up the the atmosphere and the world to where... Dude, if you've, <laughs> if you've ever played Resident Evil 2, imagine if Peeves is like a Mr. X style where you, you, like, you never know where he's going to pop up. And once he locks onto you, he just like follows you for a while. <laughs> so what if you run into him one night and what, like if he, if he spots you and you can't get away, well then he just follows you around the rest of the night to make your, uh, make it more difficult. <clears throat> How do you think jealousy is going to play into this? Walk into Hogwarts as a fifth year with a bunch of random powers. Like, you know, some people are going to be super jealous. Oh yeah. We, we have to have our enemies. We have to have our rivals in the school that aren't going to be too happy with us. 
And they've even talked about how we arrive at the school a bit like Harry with some sort of celebrity status because of what we've survived. So our character has survived something. We don't really know what yet. Some have speculated that it's a goblin attack. Some have speculated that it's something that our character caused using with this latent magical ability, this ancient magic. But yeah, how they'll they'll have to have rivals in the game somehow. How much do you think we see or play through prior to even getting to Hogwarts? Like the Fig versus Ranrock scene. I definitely think that happens prior to arriving. I am undecided on how much I think is cutscene and how much I think is gameplay. Because we see our character in that different style of, of clothing. I feel like, you know what? If you go back to this scene, like the very beginning of the trailer, when they start talking about... Uh, like, but first you got to choose. This is what they're wearing right here. Like this kind of coat. And it's interesting that both, I wonder if there's very little, we like, so maybe this scene right here, maybe we're not customizing the clothing at all. Maybe, oh, well, no, we can see there's definitely a different tie. So we got a bow tie here and we've got a, a standard tie here. So we know we can at least customize that much, but the shirt color and the coat color is the same. I think this is our starting game attire right here. And then once we do the care, oh man, Matt, we should like, we need to like break down the background of this because wherever this is, is probably where the game starts, right? I mean, maybe, maybe we're just in our house. Like maybe this is right after the, the inciting incident, whatever it is that kind of kicks off our, this ancient magic surrounding our character. See, then by the time we got to Hogwarts, we have this sort of standard Hogwarts robe, which doesn't have that kind of gold pattern on it, and it doesn't have our house yet because we haven't been sorted just yet. So at some point between the scene with Fig, so we got the scene with Fig right here. So right there, we see that's our that's our starting game attire. I'm almost positive. So we have this scene with Fig. At some point between this scene right here and arriving to Hogwarts, we change attire. We change clothes. Now let me see. I'm trying to remember in the little uh in the carriage on the way to Hogwarts. I don't think it shows. Oh yeah, so look. So even right there, we're in the carriage. Are we on the way to Hogwarts? I think we have to be because, boom, right there, Monday, September 1st, we know the Hogwarts Express leaves September 1st. So pretty clear we're not going to be taking the Hogwarts Express, which I'm kind of disappointed about. Not going to lie. Kind of disappointed by that. But we're going to be taking the carriage instead. So I guess so we arrive at Hogwarts and then maybe we have a scene where we go and they and we change clothes before we we go into the sorting ceremony because yeah but then by the time we get into the sorting ceremony we've changed into that sort of standard Hogwarts robe and then once we get sorted then we're here But that is a great question, White Wolf. Oh, and look, this right here. We're also in that attire. Dude, so maybe this is like a whole... Maybe this is the tutorial section of the game right here. And we're like getting ready to leave with Fig to head to... Uh... Who knows though, like that could be us on a on winter break as well while all the other kids are gone we're still there hanging out with fig and we're doing some uh other exploring and it could be clothing that's completely customizable it's hard to say but yeah that, that i mean that could even be before we start school right there 
What wizard families from the films, aside from the Weasleys, do you think we will come across? So we know Rookwood for sure, right? Because we've, uh, that one's confirmed. The Weasleys, I would say 99% confirmed. I mean, they, they said maybe even a Weasley or two, kind of like they were trying to tease us. But in reality, that's, that's confirmation that the Weasleys are going to be in there. Some of the Weasleys anyway, right? Uh, so I could definitely see a Lestrange. That is such a uh, a long-standing wizarding family. The, the Dumbledores. I think Dumbledores might be might be mentioned. We might hear mention of Dumbledore, but in terms of actually going to school at Hogwarts, maybe a Lestrange, maybe uh, obviously the Weasley we talked about. I, I really feel like that the nods to the original series are going to come in the form of like little, little Easter eggs. I don't, and I shouldn't say just Easter eggs though, because clearly the world is going to be respectful of the original series, but I don't think they're going to try to rely on the original stuff too much, which is one of the big reasons I didn't think Dumbledore was going to be in the game because I think they want to tell their own story. And if, and if you start, if you start bringing Dumbledore into the picture, well then, Obviously, Dumbledore is a pivotal character in both of the main, like, obviously the mainline series, but then Fantastic Beast, he's also a major character in that as well. I think they want to stay away from all that. So I think we'll 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 see some names pop up that we know for sure, but I don't think they're going to be a major uh, major role in the game. When it comes to customizing, do you think we'll be able to choose our Patronus? so that we can match our house wand of Patronus. That, the, the question about customizing wands and customizing the Patronus, that's a tough one because I feel like in all the shots, like we see, I'm, I'm pretty sure throughout the trailer, we don't see our character holding a different type of wand, but they gotta have something in with wand selection. They have to, because that's such a, a key thing for people. But when it comes to the Patronus, that's a tougher one because that's something that you want to see take a corporeal form. And it's like, how would they program all of that in? How would they program all of that in? That's why, I mean, maybe they're not even going to have the Patronus charm in the game, which would really be unfortunate because we haven't seen, like they showed Dementors in the first trailer, but we haven't seen any more of them at all. So who knows how, how big of a role they're going to play. Obviously, if they're not a major part of the game, then it's not a big deal. We don't even really need to know that charm. And I also have to remember, that is some pretty advanced magic. And our character is... They're starting as a fifth year, so Harry learned it his third year. But we're getting caught up. I, I really hope Expecto Patronum is in, but... Gosh, I just don't know how you do that. Because, they, I mean, people would be so disappointed that their animal's not in the game. I mean, they could just do it like um, where it doesn't take a corporeal form. But then people would be upset about that too, you know? <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to, if you got any uh, final questions, I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Maybe go about 10, 15 more minutes. It's been great. We've been going for over two hours. We've been going almost two and a half hours. And this has been completely like I had I had a loose structure of things I wanted to cover, but you guys have just been asking so many good questions that uh, I haven't even really needed to go through that much. So, so if you have any final questions, anything you want to add here before we get to the end, Phineas, if Phineas is in the game, I will lose. Oh, I think Phineas is totally in. I think he's totally in. Because even if he's not headmaster, he should be there as a professor. And some people have thought the potions professor looks, I mean, at least Gary Oldman and movie version of Sirius. He really does look a lot like him. Hey, there's our boy Peeves right there. Yeah, black for sure if if uh if he's the headmaster. Yeah, definitely. Is Fig confirmed to be a professor? If he is, I wonder what subject he teaches. Yeah, they, they, they've they said the enigmatic Professor Fig. I think some have thought uh, maybe he is 
ancient runes, I believe I saw some people speculating on. Because we know he's not potions. We know he's not herbology. We're pretty confident he's not defense against the dark arts. That is the, the female professor that we see in the dueling area. So that would leave like ancient runes, uh, divination. I don't think he's divination. We ca I, I'm pretty sure we see the divination professor. Um, oh, and we already know the charms professor. So yeah, that really only leaves. He could be care of magical creatures. Could be care of magical creatures, ancient runes, mu muggle studies. Imagine if we take muggle studies in the game. <laughs> Oh, that'd be the one class all of us would want to skip, right? All of us real-world muggles. He's going to be a friend of the player. Uh, kind of like a mentor, yeah. We hope he, we hope he is a, a true friend and doesn't have more nefarious reasons. Let's see, you guys think Dumbledore will show up year seven? I mean, if, if we go to the sev our seventh year, he has to show up. That, like, that's one of those glaring things. You cannot... If they go into the seventh year, either in this game or a sequel, if you get to year seven, Dumbledore better show up. That's a plot hole you cannot... Like, we're, I'm all for them taking some creative liberties, and not everything has to be exactly true to canon. But Dumbledore arriving that year... That's that's got to be an automatic one right there. Uh, so people asking about Myrtle, yeah, Myrtle Myrtle wouldn't have uh, died yet because we this is uh, eighteen ninety one, so this is before her death. But um, pretty sure we, we know we're getting Nick. We know we're getting Peeves. Pretty sure the Bloody Baron will be there. Pretty sure the Fat Friar will be there. Um, Ravenclaw should be there. Ravenclaw's ghost. I'm trying to think of any of the other major ghosts. A lot of the portraits, like the Fat Lady, Sir Cadogan. So there's going to be a lot of things and faces we recognize, even if they're not, like, living. <laughs> they're not actively alive. Unsung Hero. If it could choose one thing to have in the game, what would it be? <sighs> one thing. I would say this is a hard one to put into like one thing, but I, I want the gameplay to be rock solid. I want the game to feel good to play. So if I, if I had to pick one thing, I'll say the combat because I think combat's going to be a major part. Combat with a with a balance of the of the exploration as well. Because even if the combat is just kind of okay, you can forgive that if the exploration and the discovery is really, really good. So I, I, I just want the game to run well. I want it to play well because, I mean, everything they're showing, all of this that we see in the trailer just looks phenomenal. It just, it just looks so good. It looks so fun. The promise is there. It's all about how they can deliver, right? That's, that's the main thing. That is the main thing. How long the game will be? Uh, just purely guess, Zach. Some people were asking about that one earlier. Um, I, I was saying 25 to 30 hours for the main story. Maybe 40, 50 to do everything. And anything above that would be just gravy for me. <laughs> Not sure about the Fat Friar, but um, all the other. Yeah, all the other Hogwarts ghosts should be. The Fat Friar, do we have? I'm trying to remember the dates on that one. I remember looking all these up. At some point. Oh, Transfiguration, Mary. You're right. Yeah, that. We do see in the first. In the first trailer, there's that shot of them transfiguring the. Um, oh, what is it? I think it's like a wardrobe. We definitely see, but it's it's like a cutscene. It looks to be like a cutscene. We see a transfiguring there. So yeah, we don't we don't know the Transfiguration Professor either. So that could be fake. In fact, that one I might say that one might be the most likely. Cause I don't even know we like is are they gonna put ancient runes in the game? Like what would you Although Professor Fig is the one kind of taking us around to all these different areas, so I could absolutely see him 
ancient runes would tie in. Avalanche, that release date better get announced soon or early September. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like any time. I really do. I, I do think there are so many parties with this one. And what I mean by that is like PlayStation is heavily involved. Then you got Avalanche, the people making the game. So anything they want to show, Avalanche obviously has to get it ready. Then you got WB, major, major component of Harry Potter. Then you have uh, Portkey Games, who are WB is producing this with them. It's it's like the Portkey Games label is what they use for Harry Potter games. I mean, so you've got some major, major companies at the table who are, would need to sign off on any of this stuff. So they all have their own PR people. They all have their own marketing people. So I can just imagine the the email threads that guys like Chandler are on to where they're, you know, deciding their marketing plans and when they can reveal what and, and all of that sort of thing. But I feel like it's, I, I mean, any, any time between now and early September would not surprise me. If we get into early September and then we still don't have anything, that's that's when you start to be like, okay, what the heck's going on? What's going on? Anything with Salazar Slytherin? I think there'll be nods to all the founders and, and Easter eggs that we find in game. I don't know that they're going to factor too much into the story. Get to go to Diagon Alley, DJ asks. Oh... Yes, but not how everybody wants. <laughs> yes, but not how everybody wants. Um, clearly, Gringotts is in. We've seen that in the trailer, which is in Diagon Alley. I, I do not think we'll be able to go and explore I, all the Diagon Alley shops. So I think we'll be in certain parts of Diagon Alley, like Gringotts, but we're not actually going to get to go and look in all the little shops, unfortunately. And somebody I saw earlier was asking about they can did they confirm no Quidditch? No, they have not confirmed it. This was a story that I broke about um some information that I've I've been given on behind the scenes from uh all I can really say is people who would definitely know. People People very close to the game. More than one. So I, I I didn't... I actually heard this months and months and months ago. I heard this months ago that Quidditch wasn't going to be a playable thing for our character. It's still going to be part of the world. We may even be able to watch Quidditch games. Uh, I, I don't know about that part. That's just me speculating. It's definitely in the world because we see quality Quidditch supplies. Um, But I am, I am very confident in the two sources I have on this that it is... Uh, it's not going to be playable unless it's something that's added as like DLC later on. But yeah, I heard this many months ago and I didn't say anything about it because I just heard it from one person. Again, someone who would know, but it was kind of like, really? I just, I can't, I thought they had kind of teased it in the trailer. I thought it was, I mean, you can go back and watch my live reaction to the gameplay reveal. I'm like, Quidditch confirmed. I thought it was pretty clearly confirming Quidditch, but then the more things went on, it's like, oh, they didn't, they actually didn't show anything of us playing. And then if you think about it story wise, it really doesn't fit, right? I mean, our character starting as a fifth year, they're already going to be way behind. They're not going to have time for Quidditch. Um, but then here more recently, I talked to somebody else behind the scenes. Again, somebody who would know, somebody with direct knowledge of the game. And I said, hey, I heard this a few months ago. Anything you could say on it? And they were like, they they confirmed it. Like, yeah, that's that's basically true. There is no playable Quidditch. So that's uh, that's the deal. Yeah, unfortunately, I'd love to be wrong. I would, but I mean, I I think in the video I said something like I'm 95 percent confident. Unless two separate people who had no knowledge that I was talking to each of them, unless two of these people. Just completely wanted to troll me and and see me look like a fool with my with the YouTube channel, uh, unless that's what's going on. Then it's uh, I'm pretty confident that it's not playable in the game. Yeah. Plot twist: the goblins are the good guys. Think Fig is the uh, astrology teacher. Oh, we got some dates on the fat fryer there. 
Mary says I made a video about how I would do each class in the game, and for Ancient Runes, I said they would have a study, but basically have us be able to read anything in Ancient Runes. Oh, I'll have to check that video out. I like that idea. Yeah, that's uh, the class thing, man. If I could have them reveal... If I could only have one thing revealed, I think that's what I would want to know, is how do classes work? Like, how does the timing work? What do you do in the classes? Because something everybody wants to do, but it's like, how do you make that fun and engaging? The old games handled it and where it was sort of a class, but then you go into this big challenge room. So yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how. They did show us riding a broom. So broom, broom riding is in, and even broom races is in. So I'm, I'm, I mean, people are calling it a rumor. I mean, I guess to people who haven't, when you, when you haven't talked to the source, like I have, then I get it. You know, it's, it's still a rumor, but I'm, I'm pretty confident for, for Quidditch not going to be in based on who I've talked to. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, Keegan going to be a Gryffindor wife wants to watch me play. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. Maybe I can, my wife's not a big gamer either. Maybe I'll be able to convince her to watch me play. A bit of this we'll see we shall see disappointed we'll never fight voldemort ah oh, i mean there could be another big dark wizard but i don't know i kind of want him to stay away from the like we had voldemort we had grindelwald it's gonna be cool to have another sort of evil in the world another sort of uh bad guy or bad girl right morgan lefay hey it's possible it's possible All right, man, I'm going to go ahead and prepare to wrap things up here. This has been an awesome stream, guys. For my first stream that, like, it's been so long since I've done a stream. It's been so long since I've had a stream. And to see the support and everybody hanging out in the chat here, all the great questions, I'm going to try and make this a regular thing. I'm going to try and make this a something that we do once. I, I would love for it to be a once a week Tuesday evening kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to do Wednesdays because that's when Expecto Go does his thing. I don't want to conflict with that. I know uh, I think Alex from Podcast Now usually goes a little bit later in the week. So I don't I don't want to detract from what a lot of other people are doing <laughs> if I can. But yeah, we got some uh we got some big things in the works for the channel, guys. Some some big things. I'm excited for the upcoming announcements and I'm going to try and maybe start even having guests on. Expect to go is one that I've already mentioned that I I, I absolutely want to have James on because if James and I get together, I warn you guys, unless we have like a hard out of when the time needs to end, he and I have never talked. We, we've talked over Twitter. We've never talked face to face. I warn you guys, if he and I get going, this could be like a five hour stream. <laughs> he and I are going to have to set some clear parameters. Um, I don't think Alex has announced it officially yet, but uh, let's just say I am planning uh, at some point. Keep an eye on his uh channels and stuff I'm, I'm planning at some point to be on the live show that he does as well to talk some hogwarts legacy there so this has been a blast uh if you guys ha if you just happen to stumble into the live stream and you haven't seen the channel before um check out the videos man uh, subscribe to the channel you won't then you won't miss any of our actually the way youtube works you will miss the videos <laughs> because the way subscriptions work subscription is more just like hey i support what you're doing just want to give you this little thumbs up the subscribe button um, but then it doesn't even always show you videos, even if you're subscribed. But if you watch a lot of my videos, you will see it on your homepage more often than not. And if you have video ideas, man, send them my way. Hit me up on Twitter at Retro Reconteur. Leave me comments. I read all the comments. Uh, and I've, in fact, taken a lot of ideas um, from viewer suggestions. So uh, thank you all so much, man. All the support and the super chats, all the support with the, the new members, all the new subs, and all the great questions. It has been awesome. So we are definitely going to do this again soon. Seeing a lot of you say you enjoyed the stream. Awesome to hear. Awesome to hear, guys. Thank you so much. Now it runs an ad. Oh, man. Right at the end. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even know how ads work on uh, 
there was like this button that popped up when I, I brought open my other uh, window where I can see like all the stream stuff. And it's like this pop-up said, now would be a good time to run an ad. And I, I must have clicked on that to get it to go away. And it ran the ad. Because on Twitch, they kind of auto run ads. But I usually don't like to run ads on live streams if I can avoid it. But anyway, I mean, dude, that two and a half hours went by like that for me. If any of you have been here the whole time, hopefully it went by uh, quickly for you as well. Guys, thank you so much. Why? Are, <laughs> just before I leave, I have to answer this last question. Why are you racking tour? Are you French? No, I'm not. I do get asked that question though by a lot of French people. I found a lot of French people because the word in, in French, it's actually, it, it's the way they pronounce it, I believe is like raconteur, raconteur. It is just a word that, uh, for those of you who don't know, it means storyteller. And I, obviously, uh, being a fan of Harry Potter, I love stories. And really, if you think about it, like what we do on YouTube and what we do on Twitch is uh, a lot of times we're, we're sharing uh, our story with you guys. We're sharing stories from video games. And I just like for everybody to know that their, their own story, like your story matters. And that's really one of the reasons that I started a channel is for a place for people to feel like they belong, man, because this, this world is a crazy dark place a lot of times. And some people don't have, they don't have a community. They don't have family. They don't have close friends in real life. And so, but this is real life, right? In this day and age, 2022, I mean, this relationship, this internet used to be, it's, it seemed like this own separate thing. You know, it's like, well, my real world friends. No, I mean, this is real guys. This is the real deal. So I just want everybody to know that, you know, your, your story matters. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of the history of the, of the raconteur name. No, I'm not, I'm not French though. Not French at all. I, I want to get into more kind of like, uh, one day we'll have more sort of historical retrospective style videos. Like the one I did complete history of Harry Potter video games. Oh man, that took, that video took me so long. That's why I haven't done another one because it took me so long. Oh, it took me so long. Nico, hey, Nico, dude, those emotes look so good. I love it. All right, I'm out for real this time, guys. Out for real. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great evening, and I will talk to you again soon.